<laughs> All right, uh, we're live. It is June 21st, 2017. It is 9.10 in the p.m. Central Time. We have a star-studded cast um, here to uh, join us this evening. Um, we, of course, have the ever-illustrious Anthony Ricano. Yeah, hello. Uh, somebody who's going to go wiggity-wiggity wreck himself, uh, Joe Wiggins. Hey. The professional hanger-on, uh, Keith Collins. What's happening? Uh, Peter Shiree, uh, Mr. Jaws himself. Yo. And um, my favorite friend with the uh, fascist haircut, uh, Travis Chance. <laughs> but also, as a special guest star, we have uh, uh, the the designer of uh, the best mutant troll, no, mutant goat uh, fighting card game uh, in existence. Uh, that would be uh, Arthur Brent Crutchfield. How's it going? How's it going? Oh, going really good? Really I know really you really was good. Brent, but everybody else is like, do people ever call you Arthur? Or Oh, uh, no, nobody calls me Arthur, ever. Hmm. No, it's uh, yeah, just Brent Critchfield. Some people call me Book for some reason, but no, just mostly. mostly Did you say people. Book? Yeah, Book, like B O O K. That's crazy. That's my that's my handle. Anytime I play a game, that's always been my handle online. So back off. <laughs> Will do. Yeah, for me, like uh, my friend's nephew couldn't say Brent. He's a three year old, and he started calling me Book, and it stuck. And uh, the other day, I, I uh, a couple months ago, I met him again. And, and he asked, like, why do people call you Book? And I'm like, well, when you were three, you couldn't say Brent. So you started calling me Book. So that's where that came from. Hmm. Cool. Well, that's interesting. I'll give you that. Um, all right. So most of us, with the exception of Anthony, were recently in uh, – Do you want me to leave and come back? <laughs> yes. When you guys are done? Or leave and don't come back. Okay. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> we were recently recently in Columbus, Ohio, uh, for a little shindig called uh, the Origins Game Fair. Um, it was my second convention at Origins. Uh, I had a decent enough time. Uh, how about the rest of you? Wasn't long enough. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Well, I was I only was there for two and a half uh, days. From was, someone who was there from Monday to Monday, it was plenty long enough. Yeah, I, I got in on boat. Tuesday and got there Monday so and left Monday. So, yeah, it was, it was long enough. Plenty, plenty Thursday long to enough. Saturday is not long enough. Yeah. I, uh, I drove up from Austin, left on Monday, and left on the next Monday morning. And, yeah, that's – I'm good for Origins for a little while. It is really long. I mean, when, it's, when, you're, when you're gone for like a week, that's just a long time. Shit is too long. Yeah, yeah, I would be happy to see it switch back to Thursday to Sunday instead of Wednesday to Sunday to, to chip a day off of that travel and set up stuff. Well, it just you end up like, I don't know, it just for me, it's just uh, I miss my family and, mm -hmm. and it's just a really, really, like I said, it's just a long time to be on. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now, I mean, the, I mean, the amenities at, at Origins are great, you know, like the food's awesome. Um. I mean, you seem like you're within walking distance of anything that you'd possibly need. And also the, the big toy store. Big toy store is pretty awesome. Big fun. Oh, big fun. Big fun is amazing. I never even yeah. knew that place existed, but then I went there and that, that place was just super cool. Mm -hmm. um, no. Big fun. For those people who don't know what big fun is, just think of like oh. every town's got that that, that, that that place downtown where all the shops are really like skinny but long. And think like oh. shelf, <laughs> shelves of just like old toys like like you know just like like all kinds of older toys like on the shelves of, of like old action figures mostly i mean that's what's like on there all the time but all kinds of crazy stuff in there yeah. but yeah big fun was uh was fun to kind of cruise around cruise around in and um it was cool to pick up a couple of things for my kids there too so but yeah um the same hey it's it's mr tapestry uh jim felly Hey Jim. Mm. Well, let's just because I have a grievance to air, and I, so I just want to start it off, and I want to give my grievance, and um, and this this goes out directly to you, Crown Plaza Hotel I stayed at. <laughs> just not listening. 
So um, Jim was was kind enough. I I I asked him to bring me uh, uh, like a, a good beer from his area that I normally wouldn't have get my whole hands on, and um, he suggested this beer called Golden Drock, and uh, it's like uh, it's it's like a brandy wine type beer. Um, you know, it, and and I never heard of it. Uh, it gets really good ratings, and so he was kind enough to bring me uh, four bottles of it. And as luck would have it, it was just one of those things where getting it from him and then having it in my room, and then like you know, I just never got a chance to like one night I was gonna, but I didn't have a bottle opener, and I was just like, oh well, I'll just get one, no problem. And then um, I thought I remember seeing like a vendor had like 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 a Spider Man bottle opener or something at some point, but I mean, I, of course, you know, who knows? But regardless. So um, I was walking back to the room on Saturday night. It was like about a one o'clock in the morning. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, so this is um, I, I'm going to keep telling my story, but everyone, this is Paul Charchian. Uh, he is, um, I guess, Paul. Can you hear me? I can. Can All you right. hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you just fine. So I don't have a camera. Uh, I don't have a camera on my home PC, so you don't get you don't get to look at me. At least it is so we're, cool. We're looking at you, buddy. It's so cool. <laughs> he talks and his lips don't move. <laughs> <laughs> Master ventriloquist. All right. So uh, uh, let me finish my story about my grievance, and then I'll let Paul introduce himself and kind of give him. So, um, so anyway, so I so I ran into Robert Geislinger. Um, if you know who he is, he's part of the Dice Tower Network. Really nice guy. Um, he and I had ex actually exchanged some emails and the weeks prior because we were both reviewing the same game by Stephen Avery, and we we're trying to get the rules right. And um, so I ran into him and I said, hey, I've got these beers. I'm not going to drink all four of them tonight. Would you like to join me? He said, cool. So we walked back to my hotel room and then like, they're closing up the bar. It's like one in the morning or whatever. And I walk over to the guy at the bar and I was just like, hey, do you guys have a bottle open? And he was like, I got four bottles of beer up in my room. I can't open. And the guy said, well, I can't give you one. And I was just like, well, dude, I mean, I'm going to here. This is room. This is my room key. I'm in room 409. You can bill me for the for the thing. I'm just going to go upstairs and use it to open the things. I'll bring it right back down. He was like, he kind of looked at me and he just like he was like mulling it over in his head. And he's like, you can bring the beers down here and I'll open it for you. And I was like, oh, fine, whatever. So I I go up and I get the beer, beer bottles and I bring them down. And um, luckily, Rick Strand sleeps like a log, so he didn't we didn't wake him up. We come back downstairs. He, he doesn't even won't even give me the bottle opener. I was like, can I have the bottle opener? He's like, well, just hand me the beers. And I was like, I'm oh, fine. And I like, I gave the guy two bucks for his trouble and like, you know, and like, which was no trouble whatsoever, but you know, whatever. So he opens the four beers and then we, then me and, and, and Robert like start to sit down at the bar and he's like, well, the bar's closed. You can't sit here. And I was just, well, but those people over there are sitting here and they're drinking beer and, and playing a game. And he's like, yeah, well, they bought their beer here. And I was just kind of like, well, why did I give you the $2 then? But, you know, whatever. And I was like, and then I look over and I was like, well, where can I, where can I drink? And he pointed to tables that were like 15 feet away. And he said, you can go drink over there. And I was just, what? And it's like, that's like, that's well, yeah, but that's the lobby. That isn't the bar. And I was like, well, isn't like the bar like part of crown plaza too and I, you know and he's like well you know just like that's the rules and i was like fine whatever i should have asked him to find two dollars back but that guy was a jerk and crown plaza <laughs> you guys are jerks for hiring that guy and keeping him employed so there that's my grievance i had a great experience at crown plaza <laughs> uh, i saw you and your wife and your darling little girl yeah. Uh, how, how did your DNA? How did your DNA create something that that beautiful? Who says it's my DNA? We're, we're not. We're not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't we're know yet. One good-looking mailman. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, that's what me and my wife have said because she didn't have the ugly baby face. Because I was all prepared for when she came out to be like, yeah, don't lie to me and tell me she's cute because she looks like an alien but she just came out looking like really pretty and i was like oh man my baby's cute i'm like i'm gonna start making more of these things and selling them oh this is always always the uh the entrepreneur all yeah, right you had me up until the selling them part. all right so so i'm gonna let uh, better than renting you be quiet I, I want i want you guys to know who paul is so i mean this is actually kind of cool so um, Paul Charchian is, he is, uh, a radio personality for K-Fan. Remember, like I told you, we steal all our, uh, our, 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 
our game show stuff from KFan. So he's actually a, a radio personality there, and he hosts like a gaming episode they do once a week. And he's done a ton of other stuff. If you've done any kind of fantasy gaming whatsoever, like fantasy football, fantasy baseball, uh, that guy is like the godfather of it all in one way or another. So, but I'll let I'll let Paul explain who he is. Go ahead, Paul. Well, thanks, guys. Um, that's a very nice uh, it's a very nice introduction. I appreciate that. So yeah, I've been in the fantasy sports business for uh, since 1993, and I've I've built a ton of fantasy games, and I've just always had a real interest in gaming in general. And I've got a video game show that I do, but in the last few years, I've really, really gotten in, ensnared in in the the passion for board gaming, and always loved it. But I always liked board gaming, but the board games that I grew up with just sucked, and they're, <laughs> they're so good now. So, so Paul, Paul, I have to tell you, your voice is marvelous. Have you considered radio? <laughs> <laughs> usually, it, it usually the conversation isn't quite like that. It's usually like, "Oh, that face." Have you considered radio? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, now it's um, it's turned into a borderline obsession, and um, I'm working on um, I'm I, I'm working on designing my 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 own game for the first time ever, board game, and after doing all these uh, on all these web-based fantasy games and um and so i've just been i've just been really enjoying the process and learning about it and and trying to keep myself to like one new game a week which are you designing a social do. detection game like jim felly <laughs> 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 all right where's so that, just where's that mute button yeah so, okay, so so paul so you know see so kind of a who's who just so you can kind of see um because you weren't here during the introductions uh uh, Brent Critchfield, he uh, he has his own uh, board game publishing company. Uh, he has a, a a few games that are based upon this like idea of a battle goat system, which sounds crazy, and it is um, battle based. goat. Okay, <laughs> greatest of all time goat or tin can <laughs> eating goat. Uh, <laughs> Both, both. The, the greatest ever tin can eating goat. Got it. All right. Yes. Uh, Jim Jim Felly, the guy the guy with the tapestry behind him. Uh, he is also have his own publishing company called Devious Weasel Games. Uh, he is uh, the sole designer and publisher of all of his creations, and um, he is a bit. Of, he's kind of our um, he's kind of our left winger here, and uh, he keeps <laughs> he keeps us in check. I am the straight man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe Wiggins is a self-described uh, uh, like heavy game player. Like he loves heavy board games, but also he uh, personally got a got a job. Just recently got a job with Panda Game Manufacturing, and oh, so oh wow, perfect. So he's the he's the person. So if you ever decide to publish your game, Paul, yeah, uh, that Joe would be your connection to like talk about uh, how who would put it together and how to and, do that. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so why do you think we are on a capstone game show? Then? Yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah, why are you wearing your capstone game? Just because you love them? Because it's because it's comfy and it was free and it was given to me. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, capstone games is a is a like a very um. The, the, I mean, it'd be fair to describe them as a heavy board game creator, reprinter, right? reprinter. Basically, yeah, they find <laughs> they find heavy board games that have gone out of print and reprint them. Um, Keith Collins, we call him the professional hanger on, but he has come <laughs> into his own right as a is a media uh, man in board games, kind of like what I do, you know, review stuff, talks to other media people. Uh, and recovering Pe Gloomhaven addict. Yes. Uh, Peter yeah, I'm only on like hiatus. I am not recovering. <laughs> <laughs> um, Peter Sh Pete Shirey, what is your job with Cool Mini or not now? Uh, I forget what uh, it's called. Uh, I'm a event coordinator. I help run their, their demo team, and I also work in the marketing department and then in charge of their organized play program. You so told me you were a sexual object. I am that also. <laughs> That's mainly, you know, for my close friends. I try not to broadcast that too much because I don't want to, you know. Well, All you right, don't have to. Does. I mean, I can, I can see it from here. I can sense yeah, it. I know. He doesn't broadcast. He keeps the rates down. That's right. <laughs> but so you, I'm sure you've heard of Cool Mini or Not. Of uh, course. Pete, Pete is uh, big time important uh, to Cool Mini or Not, and we're very lucky to have him. Um, the guy with, like, as we say, the fascist haircut over is one huh. of my uh, one of my absolute best friends in the whole wide world is uh, Travis Chance. Uh, Travis had his own board game company, uh, and then he sold the board game company and worked for the company that he sold it to. And recently, he's cut ties with that board game company and is started up a brand new company called uh, Colossal Games, right? 
Is that what it's called, or was yeah. it something? And I know what he must be thinking. My God, how did he do all? This? <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually with amazing. your with your haircut, it was my pump. How did he do all? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. that's good. And now I see that Anthony's back. So the guy, other guy whose camera doesn't work um, is also one of my Thank best you. friends in the whole world. Uh, Anthony Riccano um, is a uh, highly uh, uh, highly regarded uh, podcaster. Of, so of, from, of by who? <laughs> <laughs> by me. Wait, wait. Um, uh, Lance, I'm sorry, but with Paul here, you have to make sure that you give the time and call letters <laughs> every few minutes. So... Uh, that's right. Uh, Tight 10, clock here. Uh, Nine twenty-six p.m. on a Wednesday night. K fan. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, um, and then, and actually, like, um, I've told the story a million times, but one of the like the nicest things that anybody's ever done, uh, like, I I didn't know who Anthony was, and I was walking at Gen Con, and we were, I was like in an area where these guys are doing a live podcast feed. And, and Anthony called me over. I didn't know him for anything. And the first thing Anthony said is, he said, I, I, he said, um, oh my gosh, uh, I, I've, I've actually just like, I've, I've like, I think he said, I've, I've hit the big time. I've actually become like a, a good podcast because uh, the Undead Viking is here. And it was like one nice. of the nicest, it was one of the nicest things he ever said. And, Wait, who's and, the uh, Undead Viking? And that would be yeah. me. So, um, but anyway, so there yeah, you go. And and this is just our, our weird show where we talk about games and talk about things that so so you say you've been playing one game a week. What's the last game like the new first the new game you played, Paul? Like recently? Um, the the game that we've been uh, that my wife and I picked up and daughter picked up recently that we've just fallen in love with is Mystic Veil, vale, which I'm Ooh. sure you're all familiar with. The 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 uh, the cards that you create your own cards or what have. Yeah, the transparency bit where you can lay the cards over each other. You know, I think Gloom did. As far as I know, Gloom did it first that I know of. Although probably not first. And you guys are like nine of you waiting to jump in and correct me about who did like transparency <laughs> overlays first. But first, as far as I know, it was Gloom. And um, you know, they've they've taken a, they've taken a a, a a really a fun approach that's super accessible and very family friendly and a game that I can explain in. You know, probably three minutes, and people got it. And so, yeah, our families loved Mystic Veil. Vale. We were we had we hadn't purchased it until last week, and we're already three four games in. So I, I, I send you a box of games from TMG, and you play Mystic Veil, vale, is what you're talking about. Mm. Stacked up there, stacked <laughs> up right there, right now. Yes, yes. You can feel free to take that personally. Mm. Yeah. So now you guys were all at Origins, right? I'm the I'm you know I'm the only guy that's not really in the you know in the business. So everybody else was there. What's what were the big the big talking points? Mm. I know that uh, Peter Shirey, the the Kuman you're not had copies of the Godfather board game that um, that they had it. They had it, and people I know that they they pretty much stacked stacked them up to the wall. People wanted to demo that, wasn't it, Peter? Yeah, those two. That game had the longest uh, wait times for demos. It was by far our most popular demo table. That, and uh, we also got a lot of buzz around Lorenzo. Our events did really well with the Lorenzo uh, game as well. Those were the two big ones that people were really clamoring for. So about a month ago, I was talking to Rich Summer about you know board games as he likes to do, and he told me he thought at the end of the day there's a good chance the game of the year would end up being Godfather, which he had played and thought was fantastic. I so would not be disappointed to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> that wouldn't that be great? So what's mm -hmm. uh? Can you? I don't know. Not that I should be running. That's what I should. I should just shut up and listen. But no, no, it's just go ahead. all about Godfather. But I don't know very much. And at the time, Rich said he can't tell me anything about it, so he wouldn't tell me anything about it except it was. Yeah, awesome. it's the there's an embargo on on reviews and and discussion about it until a certain date, and then once that date, you'll see it being flooded all over the. I'll arrest. tell you about it. So it's based off of the uh, Spielberg movie E.T. Really. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! I I just saw a recent video posted as part of that. Like your the your, tabletop your... showdown has a has a has a has an exclusive uh, head start to. So the we can't even out. talk about the game, even though we can watch the video and we could have played a demo. Is right. that what I, I I am not. I'm not You're not an official channel you can talk about anything you want yeah this is, this is like the whole government hearing scene in the movie right? <laughs> cover the microphones you guys are welcome to discuss whatever you want as an I, employee i don't, I don't know, know the guy said michael colion did this michael colion <laughs> did that and i'm like sure <laughs> fredo you've always been stupid <laughs> <laughs> i'm smart 
Uh, um, Anthony is a uh, self-ascribed uh, uh, Godfather fanatic. So, um, and I and, and it's it's one of those things where a a, a mafia game. They, I mean, there's been several of them, but none of them have really, none of them have been perfect yet. And you know, I don't know. It's it's a theme that that kind of needs a really good game for it, and it just seems like we've been avoiding one. So, so, so I have a question for Anthony now. Is, is the Godfather aficionado? Which do you feel is the better movie, Godfather One or Godfather Two? Ooh. Which is the better movie, or which one do I like better? Which Which do you think is a better movie, and which do you like better? I I think Godfather Two is a better movie. I mm -hmm. like Godfather One more, though. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. Godfather One. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. It's obvious that Godfather Part 3 was the best of the <laughs> best. <laughs> That's like comparing Under Jaws to Jaws 3, Lance. That's Harry. <laughs> Do you remember me telling you this story? What about Jaws for the Revenge? Shut up, buddy. Travis, Travis, why do you always look like you're in a horror movie with that, that shot huh? from below and because, the light? Because your basement doesn't have good lighting. <laughs> I'm going to tighten those chains if you keep that top up. <laughs> hey, Seth. How's it going? Oh God! Uh, okay, so I just, just had a few minutes. Travis, okay, don't that's worry. cool. That's fine. Uh, no, uh, Seth Jaffe is uh, the lead uh, developer and designer for uh, Tasty Minstrel Games, where I work. And so, wow. Seth, Seth, Seth I played fun. part of your game Crusaders and really liked it. Part of. I had a oh, meeting, just, so I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, Lance was like, "Oh, well, it'll be really fast." And then, like, I played forty-five minutes of the game, and then. Did a whole meeting and they were still playing the game when I was no there. no like you're, you're speaking, you got up after twenty minutes of the game <laughs> it was uh, I got to tell you and for we, and we were a legacy up. game Crusaders <laughs> is a legacy game that I think people are gonna love it is not a legacy game <laughs> it is it is a it is Best a eight hours I ever spent <laughs> it is a social deduction game <laughs> like a racist simplar it was great. <laughs> I had Cathar blood on my hands. It was very thematic. I had um, so I played the today with the uh, full art prototype, so the final art. That's when you're sending to Rado, right? Yes, I am. I'll send it tomorrow. Good. Wait, you're um, sending that game to Rado? Yeah. Okay. So it's one of his most highly anticipated games. Yeah, dude. It's exactly the kind of thing he's gonna like. So I look forward to his raving about it. Yeah. I'm a little worried about Paul. He doesn't seem to have moved lately. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got weather coming up on the tens. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the first time I've played one of our games with the full art prototype, like played a full game of it, um, which I think is a useful thing. I'd like to do that more often because it lets me know whether things are like the right size or if things anything's goofy. Like uh, in this case, I, I told Adam like the one point VP tokens. There's ones, fives, and tens. And the ones are small, the fives are bigger, and the tens are bigger. The fives are a good size, the tens are are fine. The ones are really small, so I think I I'm gonna see if we can uh make the ones like this five the same size as the fives, maybe the fives a little bit bigger or something. But it's you know had not having played with the pieces, I wouldn't know that, right? Yeah, I mean I I, I remember I got a game. I forget what it was called, but I remember the um. The one point victory point tokens were about like a third of the size of my pinky nail, and they were just it was just dumb. Like, why even have those in there? But uh, who knows? Um, hey, before I forget, since it's it is early, um, the, the I mean, uh, Brent's I run, yes. okay. Well, Seth, you're coming sure. back later or something. Say hi to your wife oh, for me. Yeah. Hopefully, you'll still be on. All right, cool. I'll talk to you later. I have a question for Brent. Yeah, okay. what's up? Is is your uh, is your screen name here a play on words from Hitchhiker's Guide? <laughs> what does my screen name say? I don't even know. Arthur, Arthur Brent. Brent. So it, it's oh, Arthur <laughs> Brent is this, instead of Arthur Dent. Arthur. That's uh, right. That's my parents. My first name actually is Arthur. Wait, I thought um, his name was Book. <laughs> <laughs> right out of Firefly. Uh, no. All right, it's time, time for traffic. traffic. <laughs> Here's the traffic. One eight five five. I go slow. <laughs> um, oh, it's it's fucking magic, Brent. You have you have a uh, you, you you your your follow up to uh, uh, a, a gruff 
is is on yeah. Kickstarter right now, and I and I want to make sure you get a chance to talk about it before uh, before we get too far into the show. So, um, <laughs> oh yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm uh, making the third Gruff game. Uh, Gruff is basically like an LG, LCG style game, though I'm not allowed to say that because of fantasy play. <gasps> oh, <laughs> no! oh no! <laughs> and also, also Peter Shirey said that Godfather is great. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, Gruff is a it's a tactical combat card game about mutated monster goats. And so the last two games, it's just been about shepherds and their herds of uh, the meanest, weirdest, fattest goats the world's ever seen. And uh, now the trolls have returned and they want revenge. So, uh, so yeah. that's kind of what's going on. I got to sit down and play a little bit with Brent, and it was kind of neat because okay, so just think of think of like there's a table. And like you have your shepherd, and your shepherd has like these certain abilities that like inspire the three goats that you have. And the goats have certain powers and abilities as well. And then each like, and then and then each goat has uh, cards that you put in a deck that you shuffle up. And then you have those are the cards you draw from. And those are the ones you act. And so normally it would be like one person against each other and you fight. But the thing of this is now you have these big giant evil trolls that kind of sit in the middle of the board. And these trolls will, will kind of ping pong back and forth and attack each person and kill your goats. And so it's like a cooperative game where you're trying to, to kill this, this big troll. And you think, okay, there's three goats on either side, plus your shepherd that kind of like does the powers and what have you. And you think it would be easy, you know, to kill this one thing. Uh, but me the, the mechanics and mechanism kind of like really empower uh, the troll to be really, really nasty. And, and the two players really have to work together to kind of make sure that the troll doesn't end up attacking like in the wrong spot on the grid or whatever. And it, it was, it was, it was really cool. It was like, it was kind of neat to like, cause I played the original game so many times in different ways to like, when you actually add something like that, you, you always worry that it's going to kind of break stuff up. So my question, I didn't actually get to ask you in origins. Did you always have this idea that you're going to introduce this, this aspect of the game or did you, like, was it something you'd, like, had, a, like, a light bulb moment and decided to create it? Yeah, it was actually a little bit of both. So, like, from the very, very beginning, I had the, I had the trolls, uh, but I never had any intention of making them player-facing. I uh, I just occasionally didn't have anybody to play with, so I was like, I'll just kind of come up with this AI deck that'll kind of do its own thing. And uh, But I couldn't really, really ever get, a, get it to work within one box because it just took a lot of paper to make it to work. And then, yeah, one day I was just driving, and that's kind of like my inspiration moment is I'm on the freeway and like uh, for a while and then it just sort of clicked. It's like, oh yeah, I could do this one thing and it would combine a bunch of mechanics together and make it really elegant. So uh, yeah, that, that, I just kind of had that one little breakthrough. But yeah, the very first build of the Trolls was about a year prior to the first Gruff Kickstarter. Cool, man. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so go check that out. I, I mean, if you, and you can go check out my, my review of the original one. Um, I wasn't yeah, cool you did enough. An awesome review of the first one. That was great. <laughs> I wasn't. Um, I wasn't cool enough to do one for the second one. But let me cool. let me ask you something because the real reason why why Gruff is a thing is I'm just, I'm sharing it right now is uh, my wife's artwork for the game. So Virginia wow, is that's this, awesome. Uh, super long term. Uh, is that your wife? Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm not too far off. <laughs> that one's not though. I, I take that personally, <laughs> but yeah, she she's a long-term veteran of the video game industry. Worked on uh, League of Legends and Dark, uh, you know, worked at the same company that did Darksiders. We both kind of have been doing video games for a long time, and then uh, she had always drawn these monster goats, and I was like, these are awesome. I'm gonna make a game out of this. And so, so that's so, kind of what I did. If you guys know so, the video right. game industry and you're all about goats, do you know Jeff Minter and his love of llamas. <laughs> what? No. No, I, feel, I feel like there's something I need to know now. There really is. Yeah, he's a video. He's a like video game Hall of Fame developer from like the '80s, '90s. He's still going today, and he's got llamas in all his games. Yeah, I do think I remember that actually. Um, I'm trying to remember what games he made. Well, he did Tempest 2000 is probably the most popular thing that he did, it, which was for I, originally for the Atari Jaguar, and then later came out on a bunch of other platforms. <laughs> Yeah, Atari, Jeff Minter's company is called Llama Soft. You gotta love that. Is he still developing for the Atari Jaguar? <laughs> He's the one guy. <laughs> hey, hey, Brent. Those, Yo. those, uh, the artwork your wife does. Um, what medium is that? Is she doing digital or is she doing um, like watercolor or what? That's actually uh, a pencil and ink for the for the very first draft of it for the line work. 
she's very much uh, she calls herself a, a pencil monkey but yeah she does all all of the artwork initially in pencil and then the the color is laid on later after we like scan the the physical drawing in and then uh um and then okay. she uh, digitally. The cool thing about that is we got a big stack of these original goat drawings, and uh, we're actually doing a drawing for one, raffling one off uh, tomorrow. Uh, so she's doing. So she's doing um, pen and ink, probably quill ink with Indian ink on paper. You're scanning it and then coloring it digitally. Yeah, she uses uh, cool. Indian ink with their micron pens, and uh, yeah, onto illustration boards. Then we scan them and then we paint them digitally. Yeah. Brilliant. It is pretty. It's pretty awesome art, dude. Hey, I just want. Uh, hey, Berkey, what's up, bud? Hey, hey, the bearded ones are here. Yes, <laughs> hey, yeah, Brent's here too. Um, Calm down, yeah, Santa. Beard, you know he's got a glorious beard. It's like, <laughs> well, you you have the Santa beard. Okay, so just uh, also, uh, you probably actually know who Paul Charchin is, don't you, Berkey? Oh yeah, we go way back. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Charchin on, on K-Fan. I'm sure you've heard him talking about K-Fan, like 100.3, Minneapolis. He's one of my favorite fantasy football uh, analysis out there, and I love listening to his stuff. And uh, Aww. does a great job. Yeah, so but he, he was kind enough to join us tonight and talk board games. So How you doing, um, Paul? I'm doing great. Thank you for listening. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, we do periodically get into board games as well on the video game show, and we, uh, we, bring, in, uh, we bring in various people. We've had on... Uh, some people from Fantasy Flight. We've had Jeff, uh, not Jeff. Uh, uh, who's the guy who did uh, da Daviao? What's Rob Daviao? Rob Daviao. Yeah, Rob Daviao on, and you know, it's uh, it's so we've started we've started heading that way. You know, people thought we were nerdy when we started the video game show ten years ago. We're taking it to a whole new level at the board game talk. Uh. I guess the best way to describe um, uh, Kevin Burkhart's Meyer here is I always describe him as a Renaissance man. Um, he is a uh, he's a pastor. He's a stonemason. He wow. is a, he is Ooh. a playwright. He is a uh, he has his own YouTube channel, uh, uh, board game theater. He um, he lives on some like ranch out in the middle of nowhere, uh, like with like how many acres? Like eight thousand acres or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, I mean, like, literally, he's the ministry industry. No, he's got like a, he's got like, no, seriously, how many acres of land? I've been out there like 18 times. About but, 11 acres. I see the yeah. log home. Whoa. Yeah, so he's got a log house. He's got a log, I mean, he's wow. just, he's done everything in his entire life. And and <laughs> plus he's, uh, He's he's a master griller and, uh, and he's got his own like spices <laughs> and, and all kinds of stuff. So. It's even better uh, at baiting. Yep. Yeah. Happy awesome. happy mouth spices is, is, is what he has. So yeah, um, and Kevin lives in Fergus Falls. He's just he's uh, he he lives relatively close to where I am, and and I've driven out to his uh, his compound from time to time. Yeah, we just had Lance up, and we shot the Spoils of War video that just launched two weeks ago on Board Game Theater. Little shameless plug, but Lance is awesome <laughs> in that show. His acting is much better <laughs> in this video than the last one. Well, that oh, sounds pretty much. You shush. Like, you do that was a compliment. What the? <laughs> it was weird. It was weird trying to pull off being a, a Viking wearing glasses. So you know, it was just. Kind of like, I doubted they had with, 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 a, with a Chinese uh, tattoo on your arm. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Too. <laughs> you know, hey, Vikings travel. Traveler. It was. It was a weird look. Oh, who'd we lose? Travis. Oh. Yeah, you're sure bored him. Uh, uh, maybe. Well, Barry was trying to get on anyway. Yeah, Barry's alive, everybody. Yay. So, um, no, how, how can Barry, you tell? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there we go. Does anybody have any of the other grievances to air? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm super jealous right now. Kevin's I have beard. a grievance. It's basically what I want my beard to fall into the next level. I don't know. I can't, I can't hear you over the static and the air traffic controller, Brent. What, what's wrong with you? What happened to your microphone? You need to flip your. You need to flip your thing down. You need to flip your microphone down. I'm not actually using this mic. Is that better? Well, I'll have a Big Mac. <laughs> anyway, Jim, what was your grievance? I, 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 My we, grievance is that the that last year when I went to Origins, that whole street was torn up, and this year when I went to Origins. That whole street was torn up. Torn up. Yep. Don't okay. they do anything on repairs? It's so, been a year. <laughs> so, so Paul, other people haven't been Origins. 
so basically like the front doors to the convention center there's this 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 long street um that has like a ton of awesome like restaurants and places where you can go eat and you know it's it's super excellent but um yeah it's like getting across it and with all the traffic and everything else it's just a huge pain and yeah it was it was all ripped to hell last year and it's still all ripped to hell this year so we live in minnesota we're you know we're, we're no, we're no, we're not anybody that can cast aspersions on any other state and their road repair records. Well, yeah, the, the joke is in Minnesota. Uh, what is it? There's two, there's two seasons: winter and and road construction. Correct. And those, those are the two seasons. So yeah. Yes. Well, but, Jim and um, I both live in Indiana, and I-65 never doesn't have construction. It's them damn <laughs> no. unions. You know, just I-65 working. was designed so that you could always have a construction crew working. <laughs> I didn't know we had, is, is Indiana a hotbed for, for board gaming? Is that, is that it part is the of the hotbed of there? contentment? Hotbed of what? The board hotbed game. of contentment. Contentment? contentment. <laughs> I was just in Evans, it's Evansville, right? I was just in Evansville. Oh, that's Indy Tucky. That, well, it's, I think it's on the border, right? Or something. <laughs> yeah, and it's right in the corner. I asked them, well, what's Evansville known for? I mean, what do you hang your hat on in Evansville? And they said, we're the, we're the fattest city in America. <laughs> well, that's something proud to hang your hat yeah, on. Yeah, that's what they hang wait, your wait, hat on. Wait, it's not even Don Mattingly's birthplace? <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah. No, no. Well, of course, uh, Indi Indianapolis is, the, uh, is where Gen Con is held uh, yeah. every year. So, I mean, that's, that, I mean obviously, that's the mecca for August, you know, to attend. And, and, uh, that's, that's the big deal. You should figure out a way to get there, Paul. You should get well, Kfan to pay yeah, for your, to pay for your time and something. It's inconveniently timed for those of us in the fantasy industry. Cause it's right in the heart of fantasy draft season. It's like asking a tax guy on April 13th to, you know, go to Gen Con. It's, <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's unfortunately, I don't think it's going to happen, but a, a so, tax guy or a so, so tax. What now? I didn't catch that. A decent tax guy or a so-so tax guy? <laughs> yeah, that's right. A busy tax guy. Yeah, that's right. Wasn't good enough to have actual use. When you know, I've only I've only been to a couple of conventions. Is the, half of the reason to go? I it sounds like is that you get first shot at a lot of games that the general public's not going to get a, another a crack at for many months. Is that is that not a lot of the purpose of going? Uh, I think for Gen Con it is. I think yeah. I think a lot of that is like you know getting the stuff before it's released. You know or yeah. Yeah, that that's and then, but it's so dumb because I mean, every single time I've gone to Gen Con, I've been like, "Oh, great! I'm gonna get this game three months before anybody else can play it," and then I, I get it home and I don't play it. Yeah, it's more other, for the glitz and glamour and bumping well, into the designers and the famous the media people. It's, it's well, the other important. thing about Gen Con is so that um, you know, if you had a play group uh, when you were younger, maybe in college or something, and 15 years ago and you move away and you split up gen con's a nice place to kind of come together bring bring the band back together so to speak and, and play games i know a couple of groups that do that they get from all over the country they converge for gen con play four days a game you know they take off again yeah you get to meet people you get to network but then also it's kind of i think feel it's turning more into kind of how san diego comic con isn't really for attenders it's more for the business side of it and i mm. can see it definitely going that way that there's i mean literally people that are industry are just meetings non-stop the entire convention it's meeting with this person meeting with this designer this publisher this manufacturer all over the place because everyone's in one place to get it done or the one thing paul might dig is that uh this year for the 50th anniversary they're going to have some of the vendors down on the colts field so if you want to get to oh. Lucas Oil and hang out and go like touch the mecca turf, then uh, <laughs> the time to do there's, it. No, there's no vendors down on the field. Yeah, there are. May I think Mayfair is going to be down on the field. No way. Mayfair's in the main hall. The, the, no. the field this year is the open game library. The is that what it is? Floor. I yes. heard that there are going to be some vendors down there. 700, oh. 700 tickets available there. And uh, True Dungeon is in Lucas Oil, but not down on the field. How good it would be to like tackle somebody on the field if they beat you at a game or something. That would be brilliant. Clothesline them. 
be excellent. Uh, okay, so nobody else has any. Uh... If I got a, a, one more thing on Gen Con. I mean, if I were to just show up by myself and I haven't pre registered to, like, I don't know, get a table or play a game, I mean, can I just, like, go and just, like, sit down somewhere and just start shaking hands and just jo join some game? Or is it more. Is it more like yep. you have to pre-register so on what time and of day you go? Right? All that stuff. So you could show up to Gen Con. You can buy a badge on site. You don't have to pre-order a badge. They don't sell out. So okay, you come down instead of paying ninety bucks up front for four days. You can buy a one-day badge. You can buy a four-day badge. Whatever you want. One-day badge for ninety bucks. Yeah. So <laughs> once you get there, the badge will get you the ability to go anywhere in the convention center and see anything. Uh, you can go to the exhibit hall and buy crap. You can. Go and look around. <clears throat> During the main daytime, unless you buy this uh, ticket to the game library down on the field, you're going to need event tickets to go do the events. Ah. But after about 8 o'clock at night or something, now you can find the occasional table here, there, and yonder where people are playing, but there's not a lot of open gaming, as we call it, at Gen Con because everything's event space. Ah. About 9 o'clock at night, though, the events are over, and everybody's just in the giant hall playing games. So once you hit that time, you can just go and play. I mean, I mean, honestly, like the best one for just sitting down and playing games is is probably BGG Con. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's because that's BGG just. Dice Town. They're both. Yeah, I mean, because at BGG Con, people have signs at every table that says "Players Needed," you know, and you just mm -hmm. walk up and say, "Oh, okay, I can play this," you know, and and stuff like that. But it isn't Gen Con. You know, you'll play a few games while you're there, but. It is more of like yes, it's it's the it's the oh I haven't seen you since the last convention or the glitz you know. and glamour. Yeah, and it, so, and it and it runs you ragged, really. But, but Paul, I'll tell you what: if you go to Gen Con, you can come sit in my booth to rest your feet. Oh, will you will you rub my feet? No, no, but he has he has dancers. No, he has dancers. dancers. <laughs> actually, my, actually, that depends on how much you pay me. <laughs> well, well, can't can't is can't your dancers rub his feet for him, or or is that not in the job description? I'm sorry, they're union. I don't deal with that. <laughs> Jim Jim always has uh, dancers at his at his booth for you know one reason or another. Um, the last time you had you had the zombie ones that were eating me, which was great. Yes. That, was, that was that was a great picture of, the, of them devouring me. Yes, so. they are they are professional. Um, professional oh, I'm sure they're ladies. professional. All right. No, they're so, professional ballet dancers. If oh. yeah, if, if you're and a they zombie, do this because they're geeks. If you're a zombie dancer, were you a dancer before you were a zombie, and then you became a z zombie, and because you already knew how to dance, you were a zombie dancer, or did you become a, a zombie and then learn how to dance afterwards? You know, that's up for a lot of debate, and we'll deal with that right after the station break. Back to you. <laughs> and this portion of the Alaboom is sponsored by 1-800-MATTRESS. Leave off the last <laughs> S for savings. <laughs> uh, all right. So if nobody else has a grievance, um, now this is kind of cool because – Jim's got the before and afters, right? I do, I do. And this is going to be fun because um, all credit in, in the world to KFan, and, and now I can actually say that to somebody who works for KFan, and uh, and hopefully they won't like come after us for co-opting their ideas. So yeah, because they'll get all of the zero dollars we make <laughs> <laughs> from all six people that are watching us. <laughs> all right, so yeah, you're you're familiar with the with the rules because you've done it before, uh, and everybody else. Oh, geez, Barry, you're here. You're alive. Yes, barely. What? Who who moved the rock, Barry? Barry is a founding member of the Alaboom, and uh, Barry is also uh, lives. I don't, you know, he's well, he's Barry. <laughs> Barry, how would you describe yeah. yourself? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Barry. Carbon-based life form. Yes. yes. Yes, I am a meat popsicle. Oh, yes. Hold on, one second. Tra Travis just wanted to say goodnight to everyone. His Mac crapped out, and then he can't get in because the room's full. So he just uh -oh. wanted to say goodnight. God, well, his employer sucks. Good night, yeah. Travis. Yeah, <laughs> tell your tell your employer to give you better Wi-Fi. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. No, Travis. Uh, yeah, that that sucks. His Mac crapped out on him. Uh, he, yeah, he did drop suddenly. That, that stinks. But uh, all right. Well, whatever. Oh uh, no, Barry. How you been? Like, is your back feeling better, or is it still kind of? Yeah, it's you know the arthritis is spreading, and then I slipped in there with depression, and they got me on these meds that are making me sleep all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh 
just we were having fun, and the Barry showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> just need a little time. Barry, are we going to see you any conventions this year? I'm thinking about going to uh, PAX Unplugged. Hey, I'll hang out with Barry. Oh, now I wish I was going to PAX Unplugged. I don't well, it's know. An hour away. Going, I don't know if I'm going to that or not. I'm going to BGG we'll still. I'm already booked for it. You can hang out with me, Lance. No, I'll hang out with you. Will you have my? Uh, will you have my copy of Godfather by then? Maybe. Hey, when does? How do you? Do you just? Pre, should I just pre-order it through another company or through like a cool stuff or whatever? Or do you buy it through the Cool Million Art website? Or what's the? What's the? What's what's the best quickest way I can get my grubby little paws on a copy of Godfather? To get it from a retailer that is part of our Simon Play program because they will get it two weeks earlier than regular retail distribution. So, so who is a retailer that has that? We have 733 of them across the U.S. and Canada. So all you got to do is check your local game store and ask if they're part of the program. If mine so, isn't. you'll be able to buy it June 14th. But mine if, isn't. Not, if not, then you'll want to get it through. Uh, Wait, through June Friday. 14th? That was seven days ago. Or July 14th. I'm sorry. July 14th. In time well, for my birthday. Is, 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 there, is there an online place that has it? That oh, well, well, yeah. I mean, any online retailer can carry it. Our web store will have it, but we, we don't put them on our web store until they're already out in all distribution so that the local game stores get it first. Can so. you just – so if I went – if I pre-order it like at Cool Stuff or Miniature Market, will they have it? They'll what? have it on July 28th. Ah. Oh. Because you we have Yep, July twenty eighth. If you order it online, July fourteenth. If you find a local game store that has it, what do I? But Lance has no other games to play I until know. he gets. I know. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, no I games. played. I played Sidereal Confluence, uh, trading and negotiation with in the Elysian Quadrant. I bought that game because <laughs> of you, and it's sitting on my table right over there. <laughs> that is that is the full name of that game, uh, Paul. Uh, uh, it's like sidereal confluence, trading and negotiation in the Elysian what? quadrant. Yeah. Oh, geez, what a, what's, what's the it's acronym a, for that? Five minute filler. That's sixty five bucks I spent at Oregon. So it's it's four to nine players, all simultaneous action, like at all times. And basically, yes, it's like you you sit there and you make these weird trades of these cubes back and forth for all these different resources. And then after all the trading is done, then you take the cubes that you have and you process them into other cubes and victory points and what have you. And then you just do the whole thing over again. And it is, it is as crazy as it sounds and I need to play it again, but it was very fun. When all right, wait. So is this the first game in the history of board games to be four to nine players? No, 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 no. How arbitrary is that? Why didn't they do four, seven, eight and a half, and eleven, and nothing else? <laughs> I think I think like there's been some other social games, like social deduction games. Jim, you know social deduction games. Uh, <laughs> you know, were, like, I now I have another grievance. <laughs> <laughs> am I supposed to feel bad because I like this uh, de deception in Hong Kong? Am I am I am I going to get no? Kicked now? No, no, Hong Kong is a fantastic. <laughs> Deception is a great game. All right, good. No, no, uh, uh, Jim, who just wandered off, he um, he came up with a game called Bemused, which is a very uh, take thatty, um, like like social deduction. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't. There's like there is like a hidden role aspect to the game where like you have a card that tells you who you're who you're gunning for basically, and then whether or not you're actually gunning for them or you want to keep them alive or help them or whatever. And um, he sent off a copy of it to a, a noted reviewer, and the reviewer said it was a social deduction game. One second. <laughs> we got to play that with Jim and and Scott Brady and Dave Lowry. Uh, at, at Origins after I just finished a shift and talk about a fun game and, and that was yeah, that was one that was the one game at Origins I was very disappointed I did not get time to come over and play was was bemused. I will not make that mistake at Gen Con Jim. But yeah, so I mean I, I actually got to play it uh, a few times and we had fun each time. So it was weird seeing my like the kind of more serious uh, TMG people that, that 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 you know like it has to be like a game that they like have to be all super serious when they play and, and they, they tend to be like that, but then to actually relax and have fun and, and, and be goofballs during it was actually really uh, refreshing, you know, and, and it was like, it was weird. It, you kind of broke them out of their mold a little bit. So that was neat. But anyway, uh, so Jim, we actually, we actually talked you up while you, while you staggered off to go do a shot of whiskey. Or I, whatever. I had to fill my cup. 
<laughs> so thank you, thank you, Berkey, and I appreciate it. Uh, well, it was a lot of fun. I, I thought the artwork on that game was really exceptional. You know, each one of those muses were really fantastically done. That's what uh, really draw Maya, and the the production value pull, of the game is really well too. Pull up an art piece of artwork. Pull up a piece of artwork and share it. You must have it on your computer somewhere, right? Come on, Jim. Hurry up. No, I don't. Well done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pull up BGG. It's all there. Uh, you pull up BGG. I'm trying to. I don't, know how to I don't know how to share my screen. I'm a, I'm a noob. Oh lord. You yeah. do it. Boys, boys, you're both pretty. Girls, girls, girls. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Mrs. Garrett. All right, I'm pulling up BGG. Tell me how to share my screen. Uh, it's over on the on the left hand side. Yeah, it's on the, the green button. Images. Right where you pass the duchy. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going there, but you stepped all over my touchdown call, Keith. Thank uh, God. Because I threw the pass first. I mean, Jim, if you can't get the artwork up, I'll be glad to go grab a copy of Delve and show some of the artwork off for that <laughs> instead. How do I? How do I? Um, I am on the left side of the screen. What do I do? There's the a blue screen. screen. There you go. Now it says screen share on there. There you go. And All right. Then you click on that, and then, you, then you click on the thing you want to share. That's me. There you go. So let me, so, make, that, let me make that bigger. Oh, nice. uh, that's what your wife says, but it didn't happen yet. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the thespian. Uh, yes. Ooh. Hmm. The example of the card, and uh, the poet's one of my favorites. Hmm. Yes. You see that okay? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm even highlighting you there, Jimbo. Yay. So, so yeah. Uh, the artist, uh, we talked a great deal, and she decided. Um, that looks like your Twitter feed, so I'm going to turn that off. Yeah, I'm, I'm turning it off now. Huh? I'm going to unshare. There you go. So uh, she, um, she made all six of those virtuoso, six different ethnicities uh, and split it uh, male, female, 50%. So it was kind of nice of her to do that. What did I say about the left wing? Anyway, um... I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he said you're a big fan of winger. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, hate, winger. I hate winger. They're up there with uh, Nickelback. Where's, where's David Lowry to protect? To, to <laughs> <laughs> I can't get in because we're full. Oh... Anyway, oh well, um, right. you, know, you know, I actually had a very good conversation with David at Origins, and I know that some of you might might be surprised by that, but he and I sat down and played a couple of games, and uh, we actually played uh, Vikings 878, which was really good from Academy. I saw and, David at Origins, too. He walked by the booth a few times and said, hey, I didn't really get a chance to talk to him, but I did see yeah. him. There. No, it was it was it was good to see him, but anyway, um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure that's his natural hair color. <laughs> no. All right. So uh, let's do Jim. You got before and after. Uh, I do. So let's let's with, and this is just for fun. We don't uh, we don't do anything uh, um, special here. We just kind of we just kind of have fun. And uh, as always, your name is your buzzer, and as soon as you know, you yell it out, and then uh, go from there. Like I said, Paul, you've you've definitely probably played or hosted it yourself. So. Um, yeah, I get the bit. Is uh, is it all board game related? Is all no, it's, no. it's all over the place. Sadly, all no. <laughs> all right, it's from all, all right. Over the place. So I, I will preface this by saying that some of the words, some of the parts of names, may be homonyms. So um, they might be spelled differently, but they're pronounced the same. Okay. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome, son. By the way, heard a great dad joke. When does a dad joke become a dad joke? When it becomes apparent. Oh, 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 God. Oh, God. <laughs> there were moans all that was, around. That was, that was so just bad. Burst. Well, no, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm the one sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, Paul, if you're ever muted by anybody, you have to unmute yourself. You can't, nobody else can unmute you. You just, there's a little arrow by your, by your. Uh, you're a fucking finger. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can actually see you can actually swear on the air here because you know nobody cares but uh, i've done it, i've done it once on the air Kate, oh, did, did, you catch, did you catch any heat for it you know, oddly enough i didn't and um i thought uh i thought i was gonna be in such big trouble and they were like man when the fcc calls you're it's you're gonna be in big trouble and well, it was so how, innocent how, at how the time was swear What's that? Was it like a GD swear or an S swear or an F swear? I'll tell you. I will tell you. Was the C you. word? 
Uh, no, thank God, no. Um, <laughs> communism? See, you, see you next Tuesday? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you exactly what it was. It was uh, Roger Moore had just been, Roger Moore of 007 fame, um, actor, had just been knighted. And so I, I was saying, you know, in the old days, you had to like you know, slay a dragon or save the princess or, you know, now all you have to do is be the third shittiest Bond. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that got thrown up. <laughs> so what? So you, you obviously go Connery, and then the second would be oh, what? Remington Steel guy, or what? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> right. George, George, Larrabee. Yeah, George Larrabee. George Lazenby. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I think Lazenby's clearly last, right? And then Timothy Dalton's the third worst, and then you can go to Roger Moore. He's the third you're, shittiest you're, Bond. You're all wrong. Peter Sellers is the best James Bond. Oh, that's right. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I actually. I actually, the Timothy Dalton one for the, the where he um like a license to kill or whatever when he went rogue, and and left and and he was fighting that uh, drug drug dealer or whatever. Uh, I like I like that one. You know it, that was that was that was a good that was a good bond. But you know regardless, that's that's just me. So I, what's what's the thing? They're not going to make any more Bond movies, or they're talking about not doing any more Bond movies, or that would be so cool. I doubt that. <laughs> the latest one made a shit ton of money, didn't it? The well, they all do. Too. They all they do. All do. And so, how yeah. how many have been really just top to bottom good movies? Like the first one with the new guy was good. Two, yeah, two. Yeah, the first, Casino Royale. Yeah, yeah the, the second first. Casino Royale was great. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, well, and then uh, Goldfinger is really good. Yeah. I mean, most of the Connery ones are good. Thunderball's good. Yeah. Um, we need from Russia. Connery. That's what we need. Some <laughs> women need a good slap. John. Sean Connery, James Bond, yes. He's yeah. strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've been trying. We've been trying to get before and after now for like twenty minutes. All right. so, okay, here we, we go. Before, before and after, up and listen to Jim. Number one, bald, brilliant DC villain turned backup vocalist for Chaka Khan. Anthony Ross. Anthony. Lex Luthor Vandross. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> good grief. None of none of these are going to have any proof. I'm going to warn you. Oh. <laughs> hey, I, actually have an, I actually have an an, an anthony rule for, for initials that we're going to vote on and see if we're <laughs> But anyway, so go ahead. I Number two. Yes. West London sister of Alfie, MySpace singer of Smile, and greasy haired potions professor. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the hell he said. Is that like is that three different parts to it? Yeah. Can we limit West. these to one sentence? <laughs> West. <laughs> West London sister of Alfie, MySpace singer of Smile, and greasy haired potions professor. Nobody nobody fucking uses MySpace anymore. Well, okay, so the, the greasy-haired potions. It's Severus either, Snape. Well, it's yeah, Snape. Snape so, uh, who played Snape? Alan Rickman. So something, Alan Rickman. Um, give us the first part again. We, come on, West, guys. we're West, smart. Enough. West London singer of Alfie and MySpace singer of Smile. Come on, Anthony. You gotta be. You gotta have been googling for like the last five minutes with no camera on you. Hey, I know, wait, wait. I can't find the connection. I'm getting Google and I can't find anything. The so, answer okay. is. Wait, wait. So Dion Warwick saying, "What's it all about, Alfie?" Right. The song "Alfie" was done by Lily Allen. Oh, okay. okay. So Lily Allen Rickman. Lily What's Allen Rickman. What is the I middle part Allen? have to do with anything? She also did smile. That yeah, was all about references Lily to her. And she was on MySpace. Yep, that's how she got famous. She uh, went on MySpace. People picked up her songs, and she got a contract out of it. Who? who can we have somebody else do before and after next week? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I gotta tell you, Lance said to me today, "You do before and after, right?" So I did these in an hour between meetings. Okay, yeah, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm, rolling, I'm rolling it back a second here. This is so, uh, Alfie. Alfie came out in the '60s. <laughs> no, that's what's it all about, Alfie. The song Alfie came out uh, a couple years ago by Lily Allen. Next. 
Max, yes. <laughs> Al- I believe Alfie is the actual name of the song by Dionne Warwick also. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Piloted Antares, fifth man to walk on the moon, and Fox News personality. You're putting three things together. It's before and after after. <laughs> before, middle, before this middle and after. This one's before and before and after. <sighs> oh, that, that well-known fifth man to walk on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you guys got them all so easy last time, I had to make them a little trickier. Why don't you just have the guy who lives next door to me? <laughs> <laughs> That's you, Lance. I didn't uh, want to say. Say it again. Give it, to, give it to me again. Piloted Antares, fifth man to walk on the moon, and Fox News personality. Okay, what's piloted Antares? Was Antares like... The fifth one of the man Apollo the landers. The fifth man on the moon was Shepard. Alan, I think it was. Alan Shepard. Oh, Shepard Shepherd Smith. What? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to split it between 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 uh, Berkey and uh, Barry. It is Alan Shepard Smith. That is correct. Alan Shepard Smith. Okay. I didn't know the second part. <laughs> Number four. Shepherd victory. Disaster associated companion of Wild Bill. And 41st century oh secret of Duran Duran. <laughs> what? <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Say it Dis- again. Disaster associated companion of Wild Bill and 41st century seeker of Duran Duran. Well, that's, so that's Barbarella. Barbarella is the last part. Oh, I got it. What? Go Larry. ahead, Paul. Uh, Calamity Jane Fonda. Yes! Uh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yes. Because uh, Barbarella went and found that Duran Duran guy, and she put her in the machine to give her an mm-hmm. orgasm or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. <laughs> Next, outlaw actress with famous cleavage meets British stand-up comedian that bombed as Arthur. The second rule. Or one sentence rule. Oh, um... Uh, So I, I just turned 37 this weekend during Origins, and you guys are making me feel so young, so I really appreciate this. Anthony. <laughs> Anthony. I'm only two years older than you. Jane, Jane Russell Brand. Yes, that is yeah. correct. Mm-hmm. Couldn't think of Jane Russell. Damn it. All right. Robin's go-to married man and a New York City crime boss. Anthony. Anthony. Little John Gotti. You got it. Next. After he shocked the monkey with a sledgehammer, he went to Miller's Crossing and hung out with the usual suspect. Anthony. Oh, God. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony. Peter Gabriel Byrne. You got it. Three ah. in a row. All right, ready? Get ready to say your name before Anthony does. Here we go. Supreme singer Can't Hurry Love and EDS founder Can't Be Bill Clinton. Anthony. Anthony. Diana Ross Perot. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Last two. This is number nine. Oh, my God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so incentivized. <laughs> number nine. Secretly smarter than Mo and Larry. Comic book artist, father of American Anthony. Life. Anthony. I'm sorry. I'm just joking. <laughs> Ready? I'll say yes. it again. Secretly smarter than Mo and Larry, comic book artist, father of American flag. Mm. What was Curly's last name? Or is he going with going with Shemp? Curly. How no, is it? God. Is it uh, Pete? Russell. Pete? Is it Curly Joe Ramirez? I'll give you a hint. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard. It, it's Howard. It's Curly Howard. Curly Howard. What's the guy named Chalkin? Close enough for government work. Curly Howard Chaykin. 
Chapin. Who's Howard Chapin? Uh, American flag. American flag. Yeah. Famous American flag was a America's finest comics, if I remember correctly. Was that was that the comics label? I don't think that was the line. Hmm. All right, go ahead. All right, here's the last one. Thank God, right? Here we go. It's it's like the Karnak. I hold in my hand the last <laughs> envelope. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> First, he created the world of Xanth. Then he became a magic ventriloquist before turning to cannibalism. Lance. Charlie. Keith. Lance. Damn it. Piers Anthony Hopkins. Ah. Yes. <laughs> oh, I got one. Oh, thank you. Oh. You've got the last one, the most important one. The most important one. The uh, ultimate one. The yeah. ultimate one. So, like, Piers Anthony books, remember remember when you, when you found out about those and they actually, yeah. like, you, you convinced your parents to buy them for you, but they talked about, like, sex and stuff, and you thought you were all like, ooh, there's, like, naked stuff in here. I remember that I went being down great. to the bookstore, and if they, when they didn't sell the books to the bookstore, they ripped the front cover off and sold them for a quarter. <laughs> oh. Wow. And then the bio of a space tyrant books were basically just, like, softcore pornography, you know, as far uh -huh. as, with, with a little bit of science thrown in. But he knew what sold. He he knew his he knew his target market of fourteen year old boys. I know. So well, I'm I'm sorry if that didn't live up to your standards, Paul. But like I said, I'm pretty lowbrow here. Yes, <laughs> I thought it was just fine, Jim. All right, I got well, one okay. right, so I can Thanks, assure you, Danny. one of the questions was great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so here's the deal. So this is so Paul, you don't realize this, and 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 Brent, you probably don't realize this too. But but uh, other than one crushing defeat uh, handed out by me, <laughs> uh, it's on uh, video. We can go back and watch it. <laughs> oh, it was it was absolutely crushing. I really I really wouldn't use the term crushing either. Uh, I, I I okay. I'll I'll use a better terminology. Other than the 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 horrific defeat at the hands of myself. Uh, <laughs> Anthony has a stranglehold oh, on, geez. on 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 the, <laughs> yeah. the, the 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 initials game for us, um, and we actually hold a contest. So like whoever wins it has to host it the next week. Um, uh, I would have won last week regardless. Anthony couldn't show up for some reason, but it doesn't matter. I ran um, it last time. Well, that you too. Ran it last time. I wasn't here to beat you last time. Uh, you know, the, the you know it doesn't really matter. The point is, is that I won. <laughs> we don't need facts. Yes. So, so here's since since Anthony has said, and I'm just going to ask. It's up to Anthony whether or not he'll accept this change. I'm not going to force anything upon him, but I would like to. to I vote yes. I would I like. To, to, I have to spell the answers. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to propose that Anthony is not allowed to ring in until after the second clue is spoken in its entirety. I like it. <laughs> Anthony, will you accept this alter alteration to, to tonight's initials and if it just, just to even the playing field a little bit? I, I will. However, I would also propose that the wild stab guessing on the first clue should be penalized. <laughs> How would you penalize it? You can't. You can't bring in for the rest of that one. No, 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 no. My, no, not, not me. My point, point is, a couple of weeks ago, we we did this, and people <laughs> would just go. Originated in New York, and people were just yelling out answers and this Peruvian bitch. Like slap. four people guessed before an actual clue that would, anyone would get got came out. <laughs> All right, well, what would you suggest a penalty for, though? We're not going to give away negative points because then, 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 like, Jim would have negative 17 every <laughs> single time. <laughs> well, then, but, then, but then the viewers could guess how negative I will go. Oh, there you go. See, so we do actually do a giveaway. Like, uh, I give away if somebody's uh, just like so this. I have, to like, wait, I have to wait till the end of the second question? Well, you'll probably know the answer after the very first one. <laughs> But the thing is, is that like you have to wait till I'm done with the second one, and then you know, and then as soon as I'm done, then you can write, ring out, yell out, Antony, and then and then go for it. Well, I see. I don't know what like Brent over here looks pretty scary. I think he knows this. this well, stuff. I think can I can, 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 I, can I can I yell out Anthony to force he, he is, him to get he is, early? His brain is so full of information that hair does not grow on it anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> sit over here and play this game. The weird thing is, is that what's his face? I can't remember his name right now. The the guy who works for BGG that Scott got on that one night. He was brilliant, and he hasn't come back since. Jeff he, Anderson. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jeff. Uh, I I really want to see Jeff and Anthony go head to head, but we haven't had it happen yet. So no, I'm going to retire. Leave on a high note. Back. 
Well, I got words hardened before and after, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. So, so uh, just for you, so Brent, if you don't know the rules, or yeah. if you haven't watched the show, uh, basically what I do is I give away. If I give out two initials, the initials are for whatever uh, person, place, thing, whatever, and every every single thing of the fifteen initials that I have are, are the same. They're all of the same initials. I'll give out five clues for each one. Give them a couple examples, like well, S W. Well, no, video. like, like, how about, yeah, like, yeah, that perfect <laughs> worker. L M, uh, you know, the most, the most famous video uh, board game guy ever, Lance. Mike. Larry McMurtry. Liam <laughs> uh, Neeson. Yeah. So. Little mucus. <laughs> anyway, my point is, is that you, you yell out your name, so you would yell out, yell out Brent when you think you know it. You guess. If you're right, you get a point. If you're not right, you're out. Wait, wait, wait. Does, does he yell out Brent or Arthur? I, I, he can choose. I'll let him pick. Well, let's just do Brent until I can you know, change my profile. Yeah. So, so, so you, you, you yell that out, and then and then if you have the answer, you get a point. Uh, it's There's there's 15 and a tiebreaker, if, if whoever, so if we end up a tie. Right now, um, people should be furiously uh, tweeting to, uh, to Anthony at the Cardboard Jungle. Uh, their guesses of who's going to win and how many points that person's going to score. If you manage to get that right, uh, then I will send some cool games from Taste of Minstrel uh, your way. Yokohama. Uh, <laughs> Yokohama is yeah. comple completely sold out. It's like it's like we don't have any copies. We're waiting on the, it's being reprinted right now in in China. <laughs> so. Uh, it was well that we had we had like forty five hundred backers, and I think I think it was like I think it was ten grand. I think it was ten k if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean we so we uh yeah we're we're excited. But it got nominated for uh uh Portuguese Game of the Year. Yep, so, I was just looking at that earlier. Uh, I mean it's got tough mind. it's got tough competition, but you know hey, better to be nominated than not, right? Though, yeah, those are usually uh, pretty heavy games. This year, a uh, little, little disappointed, but Yokohama would be my pick out of those five. In in your in your estimation, would you where would you put the weight of Yokohama uh, there? Uh it's it's solid medium weight. I mean, it's got enough interesting stuff to do that I think it like keeps people coming back. I'd put it toward. I don't the think it's a heavy it game. Goes down the track faster. Ah. Uh, all right. So, all right. Uh, nobody look at the chat. Chat, please don't give away the answers. I'm about to get ready to give you your initials. You can start furiously scribbling down your ideas. Uh, Anthony, get your Google machine going so you can get the correct answers. Um, as I'll oh, notice, people that are tweeting your guesses, Anthony is not allowed to guess until after the second clue has been read in full. So, just if you want to, you know, and we got we got Brent here. We got we got the guy who works at the place that he, they created the game. So, you know, you might want to switch it up a little bit, but I don't know. So are you ready? Uh, here are your initials for tonight, uh, for June 21st, 2017. Can I get a station break, Anthony? No. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Two points uh, for Anthony right away. Your initials, your initials for this evening are J... W, J, Marriott. W, <laughs> yes. Uh, I, and I would like to uh, like give great thanks to uh, my beautiful and lovely and patient wife Rebecca for uh, giving me most of these. She, I, I did a lot of the research for the things, but she came up with most of the things that are on this list. Anthony, oh. <laughs> Jack <Wad>. <laughs> <laughs> All all right, so JW, I'll give you another 20 seconds or so to uh, to scour your brain for ideas, and then uh, we will dive in, as it were. All right. So. All right. Well, here we go. Uh, please, once again, if you have guesses, tweet those to uh, Anthony uh, at, at the Cardboard Jungle. At CBJ Podcast. CBJ Podcast, sorry. Uh, not uh, anything else. <laughs> All right. So, uh, number one. First clue. Weighed 13 pounds at birth. Jeez. Whew. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Clue number two. 
was raised Presbyterian. Jim. Anthony. Ooh. Jim, Jim got him first. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to turn this Jim. over to Kabuki Kid. That's I, no, I, I, I know. Jim. I know. <laughs> Kabuki Kid, Kabuki Kid, you are the uh, adjudicator of justice. Uh, we will. We are going to wait uh, for uh, her response here. Kabuki Kid is a, a regular listener of the Owl Boom. Uh, and she is. Jim was first. We can say it. So, Jim. Uh, I, I talked and then heard him, but okay, fine. So it's, it's a fix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can, hey, Jim. Anthony, I'm gonna get it wrong anyway. Yeah, Jim. Yeah. Go James ahead. Woods. James Woods is incorrect. Anthony, you ah. have the, you have the option at this point to to uh, claim your ring in, or you can you can you can wait for the next uh, clue. Yeah, I'll, I'll ring in. All right, uh, John Wayne. John Wayne is correct. John oh, Wayne was yeah. raised by the one uh, of my I should have known. <laughs> I really wanted I'm to get to clue it. three because because was supposed to be called Anthony in his Anthony. first it, in his first starring role. Uh, they wanted he, they he had picked the stage name of Anthony Wayne, but uh, they, they it was denied by the uh, the movie producers because it sounded too Italian. Mm -hmm. He truly was the <laughs> king of the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> and just other ways, uh, Abby Hoffman once said, once said of him, I like their wholeness, his style, but as for his politics, well, I suppose even cavemen felt a little admiration for the dinosaurs that were trying to eat them. Hmm. And uh, and this is this is nice and poignant. Uh, his grave is marked with a simple line, tomorrow is the most important thing in life. It comes into us at midnight very clean. It's perfect when it arrives and it puts itself in our hands and it hopes we've learned something from the day before. So I, I, I kind of thought that was a good quote. Hey, interesting story. My dad worked for John Wayne down in Arizona at the Circle K Ranch. Oh, really? <laughs> That's really cool. Did he, did, he have any, did he have any amusing anecdotes about John Wayne? Uh, he sat on the fence and had a couple beers with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's cool. There you there go. You go. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Uh, here's Anthony with Anthony with one. Uh, <laughs> number two. Originally entitled Scorn. Single-handedly established the Tarasov Syndicate. Inspired in by the good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Clue number three. Inspired by the good, bad, and the ugly. Keith. Keith. Josie Wales. Ah. Keith, you're out for number two. Guess. Clue number four. Holds a 88% on Rotten Tomatoes. Final clue. Recently inspired a sequel. Oh, oh, Charge. Charge. John Wick. Oh. John Wick yeah. is correct. John Wick yeah, is correct. Uh, so <laughs> Brent, even if you signed in, we couldn't even understand you. So, so, so he's trying to do this. Could you okay take take the the, the the styrofoam out of your mouth and then, <laughs> and then can you unplug your mic and plug it back in? Maybe that'll maybe that'll fix it. We'll we'll, we'll wait for you there. Brett. Hello, this is Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh poor Brent. Anthony uh, used another point for that one. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's wait for him. We'll wait patiently. Who got that one right? Uh, that would be uh, Charchin. Oh, Paul. he's he's actually he yelled me. Yes, <laughs> Paul. But I think he yelled out Charch is what I. Heard. I did. That's force of habit. Mm. That's fine. Hey, how? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. That's not your official buzzer. You know, I, I <laughs> qualified. I I'm sure I'm sure the guys in the morning show are cool, but I mean, are they cool to work with? Yeah. Oh yeah, they're on. All, all, all of them. Great guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I, not that you'd say differently uh, uh, live or anything like that. Oh, Brent got kicked out for Forrest. Oh, oh, Forrest. So, so Paul, how long have you been paralyzed like that? 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a good smile. You know, it's 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 very good. A it's a, it's a smile that says I'm hiding something. Yeah. Hey, yes. Forrest, what was Forrest? What was the name of the of the thing that you won the seventeen grand for? What was the what was the name of that that uh, that that online betting thing? FanDuel. All right, seventeen grand. That's awesome. Forrest, yeah. Forrest, I I can't hear a word you're saying. Are you even talking right now? FanDuel. I heard FanDuel. FanDuel. Yeah, was, well, that, well, was that something you were part of, Paul? I I forget. No, I am not. I do not have any any stake in FanDuel. What were what were the things? What were the websites you were a part of? Nobody cares. We're right in the middle of the game. Let's let's. Oh, no, I don't care. <laughs> well, oh, fanball. Fanball. Dot com. Fanball. That's right. Fanball. fanball. Yep. Fanball is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. So we're we're in the middle of uh we're in the middle of initials for us, but you know how to play. Uh, so we'll just uh, move forward. JW are the initials. Are the initials. Oh yeah, J <laughs> W are the initials. It is right now. Third clue. Jared Leto has already guessed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, number three is fifty-two years old. Born to a screenwriter grandfather. And a screenwriter Joe. father. Joe. Go ahead. Joe. Uh, Jack White. Jack White is incorrect. Anthony. Anthony. Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon is correct. Uh, uh, his father wrote for Golden Girls. Yes, he did. Uh, received, wow. an honorary, received an honorary doctorate from Wesleyan University. His arguably most famous creation was originally named Rhonda the Immortal Waitress. That's what Buffy the Vampire Slayer was originally called, hmm. and then uh, yeah, consider stupid name. <laughs> considers Jean Paul Sartre's Nausea to be the most important book in existence. That made me sick. That book. So, but there you go. All right, here we go. Anthony with two, Charts with one. Everybody else doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, number four, established in eighteen seventy. So number two, has received much criticism in regards to its handling. Joe. Joe. Jehovah's Witnesses? Jehovah's Witnesses is correct. Uh, clue number two was has received nice. much criticism in regards in handling of sexual abuse. Uh, they don't See, recognize this is where your family history really helps. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, have made several predictions of Armageddon. Has 8.3 million members and will always knock on your door and bother you at the worst possible times. Uh, no, they, they, apparently, like they, um, they're under the belief. I mean, this isn't. I don't want to turn this into a debate or anything, but like a very commonly held belief in Jehovah's Witnesses that um, a sexual abuse has to have two witnesses to it; otherwise, it didn't occur. <laughs> so, yes, wow. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why voyeurism is really important. <laughs> <laughs> So, just just wrap your head around that for a little bit. All right, so we got Joe with one, Charge with one, Anthony with two. Uh, and I just got a text, and I'm going to make sure. Maybe it was Brent, and he can't get in now, and I feel bad. Yes, it is Brent, because Forrest, you kicked him out. Bastard. Uh, okay, I, I can't are, are, are you sure it's Brent and not Arthur? Uh, well, yeah. So, all right, so uh, here we go. Uh, number five. Clue number one, studied by the Australians, British, Americans, and Japanese during the 1940s. Used by Portugal during the Portuguese colonial wars in the 1960s and 70s. Forest. Forest. Jungle warfare. Jungle warfare is correct. Well done, Forrest. Uh, this having to wait thing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> during the Forrest, Vietnam Forrest did that because he teaches kindergarten. Yes, that's right. During, during, the, during the Vietnam War, became closely tied to counterinsurgency and special ops troops. Um, was referenced by Dutch, Mac, Blaine, Dylan, and Billy in Predator. Uh, and uh, U.S. finally established their own tra training center for this in 2013 in Hawaii. We didn't have jungle warfare training until 2013. We outsourced it to like other countries uh, for, for our troops. 
kind of neat little uh, factoid there. Um, number six, Forrest, is that your second one or is that your first one? First. first. So we have Forrest with one, Joe with one. Well, you're, Paul, Keith, you're, keep, you're keeping track of the score, aren't you? Yes. You always do. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think I think we finally found Anthony's Christmas. <laughs> we, we we just don't let him ring in. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm waiting for you to, I, I'm waiting for you to actually finish the full thing, and I'm waiting to make sure that you stop talking. Oh no, I, I'm making sure I talk as slow as possible. So uh, just you know, just so you know, no, I'll try to I'll try to speak my my cadence a little bit. All right, number six, uh, still active today at the age of eighty five. Anthony, you can't ring in, Anthony. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Jim. John Williams. John Williams is correct. All right, this game well, is bullshit uh, now. <laughs> 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 All right, good night. Oh, Anthony, you're in the lead. You can't leave without a station break. Yeah. Uh, winner of four Golden Globes, renowned harpsichord player, uh, with 50 Academy Award nominations, ranks second all time. And his work on Star Wars was named the America's greatest soundtrack of all time. Which uh, I think is I'm cool. just going to mute everybody. <laughs> uh, hey, so so weird, weird thing. He has 50 Academy Award nominations. The only person who has more is Walt Disney. <coughs> That's kind of cool. Uh, all right. Number seven. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Clue number one. 197 years old. Clue number two. Of Scottish descent. Jim. Jim. Joe. Jim had it. Orders. Jim. Jim. Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker. Yeah. If anybody was going to get that one, I knew it was going to be Jim. You're just All setting right. it up for Jim at this point. Uh, uh, I got to cross that one out. Value, valued as little as $20 and up to more than $30. Uh, I'm putting an asterisk on this game. <laughs> Has colorful oh, names, and the most common colors are red, black, and blue. <laughs> All right. Uh, number eight. Clue number eight, or item number eight, sorry. Uh, their father died when they were 12 after a routine surgery. Uh, clue number two. Attended MIT and studied political science. Anthony. Anthony. James Woods. James Woods is correct, Anthony. Well done. Mm. Uh, I hate number, you. <laughs> clue number three. Uh, avid video game player, which led to him led to his speaking role in Kingdom Hearts 2. Is clue four about him having a big dick? No. Uh, clue number four is not about you, Anthony. Attributes his career to the father of Ben and Casey Affleck. Uh, and then clue number five was nearly died in 2014 when their car almost fell off an icy bridge into the Colorado River 100 feet below. Like literally, like it to hit the, the land garden. of the lost. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, number nine. Clue number one, takes place under a canopy. Clue number two, a woman walks around a man three or seven times. Keith. Keith. <sighs> Jewish wedding. Jewish there wedding is one. correct. <laughs> yes, uh, clue number three, seven blessings are given. Uh, several special dances occur to entertain two. But before all that, a man who is circled, the man who is circled must break a glass under his right foot. I can go back to sleep now because I got one. Oh, there you go. All right, All right here we go. Uh, this is this is a hotly contested game. I, I, I'm liking this new. Only because you're cheating against Anthony. It isn't it's a true. It, 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 it is a cheat. Oh, it's it keeps you competitive. Cap. Nobody it's, likes to see one person it's win. It's not a cheat. It's a gimp. There you go. Uh, number ten. Originally named Ormond Stacker. Joe. Joe. We'll, we'll go with Jack White. Jack White is ah, incorrect. Uh -huh. uh, clue number two. Excellent narrator and biographer. Clue number three. A veteran of Middle Eastern wars. Clue number four. Known for their marksmanship. The final clue. While most of the credit goes to their partner, has solved many crimes on their own. Keith. Keith. John Watson. John Watson is once again correct. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting to end of the sixth clue. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, John Watson or Dr. Watson is commonly known. 
All right, so what's our score right now after we just got done with number 10? Ant me two, Jim two. Me I have three. Yeah, Anthony's yeah, got three. Yeah, Anthony's got three. Yes, yes, sorry. I was reading. Anthony three, me two, Jim two, Forrest one, uh, Joe Paul one, and, and Joe Charge. one. Yeah, Paul one, Charge one. Yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, number 11, first introduced in 1986. A new version has been made every year except for 1996. Pete. Pete. John Madden. And so that is a really good quest. If Madden start with yeah, a well, W. No, w, right. <laughs> John Wadden. <laughs> it's an upside down W. I'm tired. <laughs> Thought you were mixing it up. Yes. Uh, Go back to your chair, Pete. Um, I'm already in it. Uh, Factories assemble them in Iran, China, Canada, and U.S. Barry. Barry? No, it's wrong. It's Jeep Wrangler is wrong. Jeep Wrangler is correct, Barry. Go Sorry, for it. Barry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Jeep Wrangler is correct. Yes. An electric, an electric version was announced in 2008, but was canceled one year later. And uh, known for its ruggedness, four-wheel drive, and resale value. How old did you say it was? Uh, since 1986, they've 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 uh, had a new version of it every year since, except for 1996, where they just remade like the one they did before and just slapped the new year on it. So, but I thought the army. Oh no, that was American. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Just just take your point, okay? Yeah, yeah. No, take it. No, All right, here we go. Uh, number twelve in this hotly contested uh, initials game. Uh, died February 26. 2017 at the age of 97. Hmm. Clue number two. Born to Romanian Forest. Forest. Five, four. Gene Wilder. <laughs> <laughs> the little known Gene Wilder that starts with a J. Well, <laughs> you know, I was going to say I was going to say that was a horrible guess, but we already had John Madden guess. <laughs> Berkey. <laughs> All right, Berkey, what do you got for me? Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh is incorrect. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think Joe Walsh is dead. Is Joe Walsh dead? Seriously? No. no. No, I didn't think he was dead. We lost an eagle, though, didn't we? Wait, wait. What year did this guy die? Oh, this year. Yeah, February 26, 2017, age of 97. Yeah. Jim. Jane Wyman. Oh, wait, I have no idea who's left, but here we're going to go. So, I'm going to start with clue one. Died February 26, 2017, at the age of 97. Gene Wilder. Uh, shut up, Forrest. <laughs> clue number two. Born to Romanian and Russian parents. <sighs> clue number three. A war hero was given the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star for their actions in the South Pacific during World War II. Clue number four. Dated Lana Turner in high school. Which I thought me. was really cool. And the final clue. However, he is best known for his role on the People's Court for the first 12 Keith, years. Oh, Keith! Keith! Uh, Keith. Uh, Keith Joseph Watner. Watner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, will, I will give it to you, even though That was a tongue tie. I didn't like, say judge. I got his real name. I would have accepted <laughs> Judge Wapner or Joseph Wapner for that, because they use basically, no, yes, known for his role in the People's Court for the first 12 years of the show. I'm an excellent so. driver. <laughs> when he was when he was when he was ninety, they had him back for one episode. If you if you find that on YouTube, it's pretty cool. Um, he, he presided over the people's court one more time. Uh, all right, so Lance, I am yeah. out of here. Thank you for the hospitality, everybody. Oh no, it's been yeah, a lot no, of fun. No, 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 you're gonna leave for the end. That's okay, fine. I understand. It gets late. He's it still smiling though. I Catch him tomorrow he, at eight o'clock. He, he looks fresh. I mean, he enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> At all, Paul, you are you are welcome back whenever, and I will make sure to call in on on Tuesday for your show. Nice to meet you, Paul. Good to meet you, everybody. Hey, nice to meet we'll, you. we will talk soon. I promise. Have fun today. Right. Thanks, the thanks, thanks, Paul. <laughs> Bye. 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 Hey, if Wait, charges out, I'm out too.
<laughs> Lance, Lance has been fanboying for the past hour and a half. Oh, you it? shut up. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, Lance put the rule in so he could possibly beat me. So you can. <laughs> no, I didn't. It's he got a free T-shirt. Yes. Oh, Lance, you are so transparent. <laughs> a free K fan T-shirt. And a bumper sticker, and a coffee yeah. mug. Fifth color at four seven eight rock or four seven eight roll. <laughs> 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 um hey uh no so uh, uh what's 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 that. what's our score at what's our score right now i have three keith has three jim has two forest has something <laughs> everybody else has one except for those okay. that have not. anthony it, it had to be getting boring for you to win all the time i think this is a good rule for you no okay. it's not okay <laughs> I, I can't help it if I'm, I'm smarter than everybody else oh well that's why we have to get we have to kick one leg out front because if i pull out the win i'm gonna not feel like i won because i know anthony was hanging hey there's yeah. only there's only one of us that could take down the king and that was me so you know how mm. it is anyway uh so here you go uh the next one uh number one theologians point to it as proof of christ's <laughs> humanity I'll say that again because somebody coughed. Theologians point to it as proof of Christ's humanity. Clue number two. Used by Stephen King in many of his works. Clue number three. Is in reference to Lazarus. Clue number four. It is also commonly used as an expletive. Forest. Forest. Shit. Um, Five. That That's is an expletive, but not, not the right it. one. <laughs> Two. One. Jesus and, walks. And. Final clue. Is the shortest verse in the Anthony. English Bible. Anthony. Oh, man. Jesus wept. Jesus yeah. wept. Is the shortest oh. verse in the English Bible. Book of John, <laughs> chapter 11, verse 35. Damn it, I was going to say jack wagon. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, uh, theologians. I'm pretty sure that proves Christ's existence. No, it, 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 they point to it as the fact that he actually weeps actual tears and feels sadness, and it points to that he, he's, he's not, he's, he's both the son of God, but he's also human. So that's, that that's was, what they. That was a good one. Actors can fix that. Yeah, yeah well, whatever. Yeah. So uh, here we go. Two left. Number 14. Clue number one. The fourth installment of a lucrative franchise. Clue number two. Earned over $1.6 billion. Pete. Pete, is it Jurassic World? Jurassic World uh, is the nice. correct answer. Yes. Uh, I mean, nice. that's like that's not fair because that's like sharks, but without swimming. Shut up. <laughs> uh, that's like sharks uh, without sharks. So I had I, clue number three saw the exciting return of Dr. Henry Wu, who hadn't been on since the very first movie. Uh, scored fifty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and my final clue was trained Velociraptors. Are you fucking kidding me? That would have given it to me. That's what I was. Really <laughs> Well, All if right. Anthony or anybody but me gets this one, Anthony wins. So, what's the score right now? Anthony, four. Me, three. Jim, two. Everybody else, one. All right. So, I'll mute that everybody. Has a point. Eat, mute everybody. Berkey has nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Clue number one. Born John Anthony Gillis. Clue number two. Had an uncredited role in the 1987 movie The Rosary Murders. Anthony. Anthony. Jack White. Jack White is correct. So Anthony, Anthony even, with the win. Uh, Anthony wins. Enjoyed classic music early <laughs> in his life, but later in elementary school began listening to The Doors, Pink Floyd, and Led Zeppelin. Um, had originally wanted to become a priest, but at the last one decided not to join the seminary. And then had a successful upholstery business named Your Furniture Isn't Dead before he decided to find fame playing rock music with his now ex-wife, Megan. What's the tiebreaker? I'll give you the tiebreaker. Uh, known uh, definition is remote or unimportant. 
became Anthony. terminology. Anthony. Jackwad. No. Uh, <laughs> became terminology because of steam engines. Uh, used to describe small towns or the people who live there. Jack wagon. No. Uh, references the method in which a small train boilers had liquid delivered to them. Uh, Pete. Pete. Jerk water. Jerk water. Uh, yeah. This 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 podunk jerk water town. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <sighs> that I was like does not Brutal. reference a Steve Martin character drinking agua. Uh <laughs> use nope. guys use guys is good stuff. So Anthony, uh, you win again. All right. So next week, since Lance is the only person who's beat me, he has to wait to the second question. No, make him wait to the third. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Just, that's, just that's, to up that's it. fine. That's fine. That's fine. I, I I accept that. I won't cry about it like Anthony. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> was it next? So next time I'm I'm actually on this side of the mic and playing. I have to wait till the third one. No, no, I think, I, I think I'll, I'll wait to the fifth one when everyone else has not guessed it on the giveaway clue, and then, I, <laughs> and then I'll jump in. Uh, I think I think it was I think that was a highly competitive thing. But hey, tell me if anybody won. By the way, if anybody, uh, uh, what did I end up with? Five. Five. five, five. Yeah. Uh, no. Hey, Anthony. Starting next week, we'll just go back to me and you, just trading back and forth, so that nobody else gets to play. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, everybody talks big, but well, I got questions. my one. I'm happy. I got my one. <laughs> you be happy. The the, the, I, the thing that helped me tonight was the fact that everyone else got at least one, so it kind of spread it out amongst everybody. Except for that one. I I <laughs> seriously, I just do not know so many of these people that you guys reference. You're not the only one. For before and after, I just I have no clue. Oh, How old are you? 27. Yeah, see, that's why you're screwed is you're 27. I'm 30, exactly. I don't have the shit you're talking about. You're not 40 plus. These are all going to fly right over your head. Yeah, but Barry, you're high. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, there's one person here who might be high. <laughs> Lance, no Jordy White? Mm. No Jason Witten? No, no Jaleel White? Is it I, tried to stay away, I tried to stay away from sports figures because sports figures are kind of like, you know, they're, they're I mean, I mean, yes, I mean, uh, Anthony gets them. You know, I mean, like I had James John Worthy right now. would have been so good, right? James Worthy would have been a good one. Well, I had Gene Wilder and John Madden, but I just figured you know, not too <laughs> <know. laughs> <laughs> Too obvious. Too yeah. Obvious. I mean, just, just way, way too, like, we, right we there. We wish Jared stuff. Leto. <laughs> <laughs> Jared Weto. Uh yes. No, no. Oh, I thought that was good. That was good. Uh yeah, I didn't have any John Waters or I, I see next week uh, Kabuki Kid and me take you all on. Well, and like even though because Kabuki doesn't tweet, she actually guessed uh she actually guessed um uh <laughs> Anthony five. five. But she doesn't yep. tweet because you could take tweets and chat, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah but the... then but then you got to go back all the way, or you know, I don't know. I mean, it's just like try to find it. Um, They're not yeah, texting, so. are they? I had like I had like Jerry you West. Just call me and, on the like, phone and whisper in my ear. Yeah, and I'll I was waiting for John Woo. I thought about John Woo, but he hasn't Woo. made a movie in forever. So, uh, so neither are the Woo. dead guys that are dead. Well, no, yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering. I, I mean, seriously, I don't. I, I was wondering whatever happened to him. I mean, there were there were protection rules put in place for Dove, so he can't really make any movies anymore. Uh, what? John Woo isn't he the one that does Doves in all of his movies? Well, no, I mean, he did he did like Hard Boiled as like one of the best action movies of all time. He's, he's also like in his seventies. He yeah. is seventy one. So. Huh. Yeah. He's the, he is the Dove guy, though, right? I'm thinking about that, right? Dove? Yeah. But um, let's see here. Well, I guess he's been making movies. He just he just hasn't made anything like here. Good. Uh, no, he hasn't made anything here. I mean, like, so, I mean, like, he he did, like, uh, like something called Red Cliff Part 1 and 2, um, The Reign of Assassins, The Crossing. He's making something in 2018 called Manhunt. No, I actually watched Red Cliff when I was in India. I think. Well, Red Cliff is like it looks like another one of his like sprawling, 
like hold on, I gotta look it up. See if that's oh, it's 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 about it's about oh, Three Kingdoms, which is a game from Capstone Game. Yes, that is the one. I, I did see that movie. Uh, yeah, it's a fantastic game. Tough to find just three people though. Uh, that's one thing. It's tough. I mean, about. I don't know. You just engineer your game nights. Just invite two people over. Yeah, well, you know, it's just like it doesn't work like that. But you know, but I understand <laughs> what you're saying. It's like I either play two players with my daughter, or like I have a a, a crew that shows up. So it's um, you know, it's one or the other. Uh, but yeah, let's see here. Yeah, cool. Yeah, just Battle of Red Cliffs. I did watch that movie in India. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yes. But if you ever seriously, if you ever get a chance to watch Hard Boiled, it is. It's just there's no reason to watch it other than just for the for the gun battle scenes. But it is so it's so good. It's just uh, there's a scene where a guy's like sliding down a banister, emptying out forty five calibers in 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 in, in chi- into Chinese triad uh, gunmen, <coughs> all the while adjusting a toothpick in his mouth back and forth. It's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. And that would be. Uh, as as he's known by us, Chow Yun Fat or whatever is like the the main character. Oh yeah, bulletproof monk. He's awesome. Yeah, or like Cho Yun Fa, I guess is like how you're supposed to say it. I guess if I remember correctly. But yeah, but he's getting old too. He's sixty two years old. So. Yeah, but he had the best question. What do you mean? His best question: Why do hot dogs come in packs of seven and buns no. come in packs of eight? No, it was that was I think it's eight. What kind of what kind of hot dog packs are you buying with seven hot dogs in them? <laughs> yes, what no, what no. the no. hell? Hot dog. So hot dogs used to come in packs of ten, and buns came in packs of eight. Yeah. No, it's the other way, right? No, it was ten and eight. Ten, ten yeah. hot dogs, eight buns. Correct. But now they come eight. Was, and eight. No, they don't. No, they don't. Come no, in they still some. The ten and eight. dogs come in eight. Regular dogs still come in tens. And some of us. <laughs> Damn it! He knows. Don't, don't you question his his hot dog knowledge? I mean, it won't. Uh, I'm gonna check. He is a wiener expert. I will go get a package of hot dogs and show you if I must. Well, I got I got a package upstairs. I can go grab. Exactly. But. Uh, um, okay, so I'm so, downstairs, but you know. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, According to Google, premium hot dogs come in packs of four to six. What does Google know? <laughs> I don't know. I'll ask Alexa. Alexa, what does Google know? Alexa's quiet. No, nah, Alexa doesn't even want to talk to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> So you Forrest, know, you, Forrest, you published like seven thousand videos from Origins. <laughs> yes, one hundred thirty-five. Oh, good gravy! Just, I guess, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I know at least one of them was really good because I watched it. Hmm. Yeah. Does anyone know like if Origins right. attendance was up or down this year? Seventeen thousand, oh. up ten percent. Up ten percent. That's good. Yeah. It seemed it seemed bigger. That's what she said. Ah, uh, dang it! My touchdown call. <laughs> the uh, the exhibit hall was a lot more crowded this year than. Last That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it worked that time. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, a good one. Like Hilarious. my first Origins was four years ago, I think, and you could walk through the exhibit hall and not touch somebody within ten feet of you. Well, and it's now it's actually congested, not not unmovable, but I mean, it's you can't see all the way to the other end. Of the There's a lot of people saying they couldn't get tables. People were playing games on the floor. Yeah, the, um, oh. the, the open gaming tables were very sparse. They had like four in one area and four in another. That was it. Yeah, they, they don't. It's mostly reserved for the events until those are over, and then they, they want to get you to buy that twenty dollar library bed. For even. Is that spot up there still shut down on the second floor? Uh, yeah, they removed there? the table off of the second floor by the ballroom. Uh, I didn't make it to the ballroom too. 
There were a few, and there's there were a whole bunch of tables out in the hallways, and I I never had a problem finding a place to play a game at. I played my hotel room and my hotel lobby. So. Yeah, because I didn't get a chance to play yeah. many games, but I always felt like there was spaces to play games if I wanted to. That's because you recorded oh, yeah. twenty seven thousand videos. Yeah, about recorded them all you, today. You, you can't play games when you're constantly recording. <laughs> Yeah, That's but there was still it. tons of room in that uh that that weird one. Nothing's in the exhibition or whatever it is. Like there were just empty I tables all over the place. I saw your video today of uh, City of the Big Shoulders. That was good. Yes, that one looked pretty Isn't interesting. That Chicago? No, it's a mini yep. Euro coming out next year. So, is some going on with Big Chic? Yeah, they're done. They closed. They are done. Yeah, they, they they filed bankruptcy and shut down. Oh man, I want to go to the zoo again. <laughs> 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 the worst thirst worst budget ever. <laughs> hey, come come experience a fancy gala at the zoo. We have hot dogs and cans of soda. Those burgers are pretty good. I'll, I'll give them that. The it food still food. wasn't cheap. How many hot dogs did they have in a pack? <laughs> so here's the thing. I so I, I talked to somebody that like okay. So there's a lot of when when Geek Chic said that they were like can't they were they were shut down or whatever, and like bankrupt or whatever. And like and then like there was all the that 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 hoopla going around of why people thought it actually happened and this that and the other thing. And they were trying to say that like you know like when they took over Crash Games, that was like um like the like what killed them or something like that. And I was talking to a few people, and I mean, this is neither here nor there, and who knows what people know. They said a couple things, like, that were really important, like, and this isn't me trying to defend Patrick Nickel, I mean, because, you know, he's my friend, but I mean, I because I, I don't know exactly what was going on either. But the the idea that, like, one, okay, so the idea is that there was, there's been a conspiracy theory ballyhooed about that when Patrick Nickel, um, like, sold Crash Games to Geese Chic, and they kind of took him over, and they were going to use the Crash Games process to, like, uh, you know, publish games or whatever. That um, that Patrick wasn't a hundred percent forthcoming about like his debts or anything like that, and like, and so they they took on a lot of debt that they didn't realize they were going to be doing, and so then they uh, were forced to, like, and that was one like like the 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 nail in the coffin type of thing or whatever, like. One, and this is, and once again, this is me talking. I don't know anything, so you know nobody should take anything I have to say here to like as as verbatim. But the few people I talk to is in in like you know as far as like board game business is that one, it, if you're going to buy a company, I mean you 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 have a lawyer that like yeah. you know goes over a contract and and that person like you know you 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 trust that accountant and that lawyer and everything else to have like due diligence to like get an accurate representation of exactly what's going on. You have to believe the geek cheek did that. And two, if I just, I just, I, I, I find it so hard to believe that geek cheek was in a situation where like the acquisition of a company that like, I mean, seriously, how, 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 how much in debt could crash games have been? I mean, like a hundred thousand dollars, $200,000. I have no idea. I, I have no idea what would be a, a fair amount of money. That would represent. Did they only have two games? No, Crash Games had no. had several. I don't remember all of them, but so let's just let's just throw out a hundred thousand dollars. And maybe I'm maybe that, that it's maybe that's incredibly wrong. But let's just are you? I mean, so you take on a company knowing that it's in debt, and then it's in debt a hundred thousand dollars. So either so a they didn't know that it was that far in debt, or b like they knew it going in, but then they couldn't cover it. It just doesn't seem to me that like. I, I something went wrong at Geek Chic, yeah. and maybe we'll never know what it is. But I just I find it hard to believe that the acquisition of Crash Games was like the, they, the thing that shoved prior, anybody prior up. To the acquisition of Crash Games, they had two point five million in revenue and a two hundred thousand dollar operating loss two years running. Right, so, so that, they that were was running at an operating loss prior to the purchase. Right, I and then they, was, then they try Geek Chic XP, right? The which, <laughs> right. Yeah. And then they did the zoo thing as part of that, which, you know, that was money that they threw in the toilet. But, you know, 
the big thing that happened in the last three years, they got actual competition. Competition. Yep. Right? Because yep. you look at it and people are like, well, Geek Chic had the best quality. Yeah, maybe. I, I can't speak for the others. But here's the thing. Geek Chic created the market. A lot of people bought Geek Chic because that was the only thing they could buy, not because it was the best table. And I can spend $7,000 or I can spend $3,000, and I'm just going to put it in my damn basement. What should I buy? Hmm. I will buy the $3,000. And it wasn't just one new competitor. There's like, like five. four or yeah, five. Geek and Sons, Carolina Game Tables, BoardGameTables.com, they all have, offer tables under two thousand dollars that are two thousand yeah. i mean perfectly yeah, serviceable just without end, the flash at the end of the day it's still just a table it's a functional piece of furniture that you're going to play games on so right it's i mean unless you needed the uh what was the big one called the, the ridiculous the, oh the sultan or something yeah or the right? sultan. unless you needed the sultan because you just had money that you were tired of wiping your ass with or Skullt Alden, the $85 million man, then <laughs> you, uh, you don't need the Sultan. I think they just thought uh, like the higher echelon, I guess, of gamers was out there and they, they just want But the average gamer can't afford Geek Chic. So yeah. they, that and they, coupled with the Crash games, I, I don't think that did as well as they thought it would, you know. I would tend to believe it was more competition than anything else. I think yeah. they just. They just, I don't. I think they failed to adapt to the market. Yep, yeah. they yeah. didn't make an economy table. Their cheapest table was still like four or five grand. And yeah. did, what, did. The funny, the funny thing was when they announced that they were doing um, the Shark Tank. I thought for sure when they went on there, if they got a deal, that the, they were going to say, "Hey, you need so you need to a mass market product. Mm -hmm. You need something that's you know." But they, they don't. You can still build your, you know, the sultans and all that. That if you're a custom build people, but you need to take your designs, take your manufacturing process, ramp it up, and have a warehouse just full of tables that people can just order, and you just send them out the door. Right. Yeah, eighteen month waiting list is going to kill kill a lot too. Yeah. Because the so, thing is, too, is a lot happens in eighteen months. I've seen people, you know, eighteen months, you lose your job. And all of a sudden, oh, I, I put a down payment on a on a table that's th thirty five hundred bucks, and now I have to pay the rest of it. You're not getting your deposit back, right? Yeah. Once they start working and, on and it, the shark the Shark Tank thing fell through anyway. That deal fell through on them. I, but, 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 they canceled it, or the they, shark tank. they reported they they canceled it, right? So in the end, that's capital that they apparently needed, or they wouldn't have gone there. That they yeah, yeah. but. Think about this. You just talked about the 18-month lead time. So they go out of business, no warning, right? And they were up, They were selling $2.5 million a year is what they say. So we got at least $3 million in customer money out there that's just gone right now. Yeah. The yeah, weird I mean, thing is that they were at a show like th six days before they went under so hey anthony you know the gin concept would they have already paid for their booth by now oh they would have paid for it last uh -huh. year when they reserved it yeah. so yep. does that mean that the uh, hat sellers that are in there with them get that whole 800 square foot booth <laughs> <in itself>? uh, <laughs> no, same with comic-con they're they're booked at comic-con this year no but those hat sellers are part of those are as part of their brand the yeah but it's seller, actually it's has stupid. a separate geek sheet uh, no it's website. not a geek sheet name not geek sheet, it, i mean etsy website they have an Etsy website for that. No, so, I don't know, but the the stupid the mu wooden mustache things they were selling and yeah. the monocles that they <clears throat> the thing about them is they went and started making all this stuff. They made this cabinet that was like amazing looking, amazing, but like for storing comic books. Yeah, and it was like no, it was like yeah. seven grand. <laughs> and I'm like, for okay. The five yeah. comic book collectors that can afford that, you know? Yeah. Like, like yeah, if I have you know fair enough. Action Comics number one, then okay, good. <laughs> uh, I can afford that, but I mean, who's it's like you could, you could afford it if you sell it. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, the whole thing. But the other guys, they're cheaper, they advertise more, they advertise better, 
and they're also just like they're just in front of people i think more often than the other guys than geek chic ever was geek chic tried to be too <laughs> exclusive and too special than the other guys and the other guys kind of came in and said hey we can do the same thing for half the price and then in the I mean, meantime it's much better i ordered my table from Gar carolina game tables and got it four months my board game it, table is one i got in six months i mean why and i've heard 18? there's been some problems, but I mean, the one guy did the Kickstarter for kind of like a mass um, mass produced table, and that went over really well, from what I've heard from people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I just, you know, it's one of those things where it, it is. It, I mean, they are obviously a very well loved company. Uh, the people that have their tables um, are definitely springing to their defense and 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 touting them, but. Yeah, I don't know. In the I, shame, it's a shame to see anybody go under, right? So. Yeah, nobody's happy to see a company go out of business. I mean, that's that doesn't make anybody happy. Um, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, it's just it's one of those things where you, know, you got to change the times, kind of thing. And maybe they didn't. And, and, and you know what? The real reason uh, nobody's going to know. I mean, I kind of hope that all the employees and the owner of geek chic, they're able to, uh, figure it out and, 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 and do something successful. And then I hope that everybody that gave their money, uh, to, um, you know, to geek chic is able, you know, to like get a refund. And I, has anybody, has anybody said anything about that at all? As to whether or not there'll be a refund or anything, I haven't seen it. I saw people start contacting the credit card companies. Sad. Yeah, they haven't really put out a statement saying what's going to happen with all the pre-ordered tables that are in, in development, or the ones that were even just ready to ship. I mean, they're yeah. probably those tables that are probably ninety-five percent done that are just waiting on a couple weeks worth of. You know, no one knows what's going to happen to any of that. They'll probably I, be in the same place as Lance's spinner. <laughs> <laughs> the lazy Susan guy is taking over the company. Yeah. <laughs> it's that that story gets that story gets weirder and weirder. It's like the most recent one was that like um like basically like a friend of his that was actually part of the like the, the lazy gamer group to begin with. Like actually like kind of he, they have like an Instagram account and somebody contacted them. And, you know, and who knows whether or not this guy's telling the truth or whatever. But he's, he, he said, you know, a lot of the questions people have are is like, you know, where's the stuff? You know, if, if the stuff's there, let us come get it and all those other things. And um, and he said that, like, like the guy has all of the stuff and it's in his basement. He's just, you know, and like, but he doesn't know where they're at and, all, you know, all the stuff. You know, so, like I said, it, it just keeps getting weirder and weirder. And, uh yeah, it's uh, nobody knows exactly what's going on. So, um, yeah, it, it's it, I don't know. I, 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 you know, I there's some there's some people that are saying that they've contacted their credit card company and they've actually been able to dispute it and get uh, credit back for it because of the fact that even though the charge was quite a long time ago, um, the, the disputes process, like the most recent time that they were told was like March of this year, that they were going to be sent out and then just recently they said they can't so it's within the window still of, of, of disputing a charge so you know I mean maybe I'll, I'll investigate that as a possibility um, I don't know I just it's 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 just a bad deal all around you know um, <laughs> you know just chalk it up to you know uh, you know this this thing like, you know you're gonna get burned every once in a while in life right just I, I, I don't think it's a scam. Like I'll say that. I, I don't I, I you know I've had my doubts and I was actually waffling into the scam variety, but I'm actually now believing that it just you know something went wrong there and whatever. So hey, you've been griping at Aldi, but you haven't said hi to him for like ten minutes. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to uh, interrupt uh, your guys' debate about the uh, the demise of Geek Shake. Clark Kent, what are you doing here? How's it going? <laughs> here, I'll take this off. Oh, oh, you oh, hey. Hey, hey, I'm here. Hey. Superman! <laughs> Bring, Bring us your wisdom, Aldi. Tell us what happened. I have no comment on this at all. <laughs> Aldi can't talk because he's done business with him. I don't talk about any of that stuff. So. Do you have right. insider knowledge? We No. Oh, yes, he does. Look at him. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> he's sweating. He's full, he's full of it. I have nothing. 
No, I, I have nothing. Right hey, hold on. Right. We'll, go off, we'll go off camera. No, okay, we're not recording yeah, anymore. Yeah, we're 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 off off camera. Camera. Oh, let me tell you what happened. Uh, no, I have no clue. No, Aldi, what no looked clue. good in Origins for you? Oh, what looked good? Um, I really like the look of Big Trouble in Little China board game. Did you guys check that out? I'm thinking about uh, everything. They did a 30 now. minute. We have a 30 minute interview with um, drawing a blank on his name. Chris Bartaros. Do, do you guys know him? Yeah, Chris Bartaros yeah. at Everything Epic. Oh my God, he is so passionate. I can tell that's going to be the game. Like, and it looks good. What what day was that on? Do you know? Um, <coughs> and it all blends together. I think I think we did like half of what Forrest did. How did you do so many videos, Forrest? Crap. Man, you're, you're like a beast. Cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lane. Cocaine's a he, hell of a drug. He, he cut them off after 90 seconds. It's a hell of a drug. <laughs> um, I think it was day. F I think it was Saturday. I think it was he had that cool little little thing hanging around his neck though the whole time. He just walked around shooting stuff. I saw him just like he had a stride, man. He was just he always had a purpose. Did you have like a car battery on your back to keep that phone powered? No, yeah, he failed to, two battery chargers. What he failed to tell you is somebody put a bomb under his testicles, and if he didn't stop, he would explode. <laughs> Not like the speed movies. <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot of good stuff. Uh, it's just too bad Sandra Bullock didn't uh, disconnect yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, did I, you got kind of stuck at the booth most of the time, didn't you? I didn't really see much. We of were. You. Here's the deal: like this year for us was way busier than last year. Last year yeah. was our first Origins, and um, I don't think anybody knew we were there. Yeah. And this year they did, so we kind of got like uh, slammed. Everybody knows the eighty-seven million dollar man. <laughs> and we missed you, Barry. Wish you were there. Yeah, yeah I've been, I don't know if I can physically handle the content anymore. Yeah. I, just... yeah. I, I missed you too, world. Scott. I missed you too, man. <laughs> how, can you, how can we didn't come? <laughs> well, Barry was there last year, Anthony. You weren't there. Uh, all right, fine. Yeah. Whatever. If you were there last year, I would have said you were. You were yeah, I'm going to go cry. I'll be back in a minute. Bless you. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like I missed it. I, I missed going to the ball hangout thing. I heard I that, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone go to the cabal hangout that was there? No. Yeah, we went. I didn't. I didn't go. Was, was it? It's just it's it's so packed. It's so it, last it year, the bar? there was about yeah. six hundred tickets that were handed out. Wow. Well, last year the, I don't think the bar knew what to expect. No, this they year, didn't. They yeah. they couldn't keep up, but but even yeah, I heard there was talks of renting the whole bar. I don't know if that happened or not. I didn't go. But even still, the whole bar it's still just too packed, and you just I mean I don't know. It just it's not for me. Uh, it's yeah. if I, I had go a to a con, I can drink anywhere. I had a good time at the Nerd Night event. That was just all playing games. Like I played oh, Word Slam. For, I played Word Slam for four hours. I crushed. Yes, you did. I came in, won three rounds in a row, and then dropped the mic and left. <laughs> I like it. Aldi sold me words. They sold out on day one or day two or whatever it was. I'm glad I went in there and got it. I it's such a great game. I, I just I pulled it I brought it with me and it was like the only game I played the whole time. Did anyone um, get a chance to play Fox in the Forest? No, but I heard a lot about about that one. It was really <laughs> it's, good. It's just two player though, right? Two player trick taking, which you it's don't just hard to play work. a two player game at a convention when you have like hundreds of people, thousands of people. Yeah, yeah but it, it, it was really good. I'm going to pick it up. It's I thought it was excellent. Did anybody else play Flip Ships? No, no. I didn't. Saw the demo. I, I bought that game because I was just like, yeah, it looks like something silly. I love it. I mean, and it's stupid. It's just flipping discs. It's Space Invaders. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. love it. It is a fun dexterity. Yeah, I definitely want to get it. Yeah, I think I'm going to pick that one up too. Did you guys yeah, check out Island Hopper? I mean, it's like a. It kind of flew under the radar for me, and then I saw the. 
it's it, the person closes their eyes. I always love when there's a person closing their eyes and you tell them where to go. Like your hand. Did you? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> hey, I'll be closing my eyes. Wrong. Hey, Lance, close your eyes and hold your Lower. Hand. Lower. 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 Go low. Lower. <laughs> that one, I want to play. Because I, I don't, do you guys remember the splatter game where you close, where you have a mask and you have to draw the map? This was, this, this was like an only certain events kind of thing? Like it's just some. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Eighteen was Tom, and over. Was Tom, was Tom Cruise there? <laughs> Got the full demo of Lisboa. Not the full demo. I guess it was more of a history of Lisboa from uh, Vital. That looks. I mean, um, looks pretty. That good. guy had a miserable trip. Really? What happened? Oh, he lost his luggage. They lost his luggage. And then he missed his, he was running so late his flights were that he missed his connection flight. And so the Eagle Griffin guys had to drive down to Cincinnati to pick him up because that's where his connection was supposed to be made at. So he's supposed to have a layover and get on another flight, but he got in too late to catch his other flight. So they had to go drive down there and pick him up. It was just. Well, what kind of, what kind of flights is it that you have a layover in Cincinnati to go to Columbus? Because it's an hour drive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, but, I granted you don't have a car, but it's just like. It's still. What's an hour the, drive and a long wait after, uh, and all the confusion yeah. after a what, thirteen hour plane ride. So yeah, six minute flight. <laughs> anyway, I I had a flight that got canceled and I got bussed by the airline from Fort Wayne to Indianapolis once. Hmm. Hmm. This war of mine, I'm I'm uh, waiting for that copy. My Kickstarter fulfillment. I don't, did they sell the game there, guys, or did anybody buy? I don't know if they sold it. It was just demo. I didn't see anybody carrying it. If that, that was... Who's that from? Well, they were they were selling Lisboa. Uh, this War of Mine has been picked up by Ares Games. Which one? This War of Mine. Yeah, they were not selling that. No. It looks it looks neat. Um, more impressive than I thought it would be. Um, I I got the ki- I backed it on Kickstarter. I mean, the rule book needs a good wash. No. Yeah. You know, but um, well, it's it's good. You got, you got shipped the early preview, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe they maybe they put a little more work into it before it. No, I got I got, I didn't I didn't do a preview video for them. I just I just I backed it because the 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 video game is amazing. Um, the the video game if you played it, you can it's on Steam for like fifteen bucks or ten bucks. You can just put it on your wish list, and then they'll send you an email when it's cheap. Steam and then, Steam sale starts tomorrow. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, Steam sales are getting ready to It'll fire probably, up. It'll probably be on sale. So, um, this War of Mine, basically, the whole a whole lot of thing is is that you and, um, and the video game, and the board game, too, but so, like, you and, like, another few survivors are all in this, like, uh, bombed-out house in, in the middle right. of a war zone. Right. And then the, and the, there isn't, like, a, a thing where it's like, oh, if you, you know, if you manage to uh, collect this many... Uh, uh, items you win it's like you need to survive a certain number of days and then and then like you get like kind of rated on how well each person handled um living in the war zone for that many days and like it kind of talks about like maybe some of the awful horrible things they had to do and how they're going to be affected by it at the end and and so it's 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 like not a clear cut like oh you win type of thing and the game gives you a lot of moral quandaries where it's like like middle of the night, and like somebody comes, and you 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 found right. you you basically spend the day like fixing up your house, like like things that you wouldn't think would be a big deal, like actually having like a chair to sit in, is like is like better than sitting on the floor and being cold. <laughs> actually having actually having a bed that you could sleep in, like and and actually being able to relax is huge. Um, having heat, having electricity, you know, all these things that you kind of take for granted, and like. It'll be like the middle of the night, and like, and at nighttime, you send people out to go. You send somebody out to go forage for food or supplies. They can't go out during the day because they're snipers, so they, then they get shots. So you don't. But in the middle of the night, when you send somebody out to forage or something like that, or you, you'll hear somebody like banging on your door, and it'll be somebody like, "Oh, my brother got shot, and he's he's out there. I need somebody to help me save him." And so, like, you have this decision. It's like. One, it could be somebody lying, and they just want to get you out of the house so they can come in and steal your stuff. Two, even if they're telling the truth, you got to run out there and possibly get shot yourself. Three, even if you get out there and save them and have and, and they don't get shot, 
you're taking two more people into your house that you don't have any food to feed them. And it's just going to make the other people living there already starving as much as they are. So it's like you have these like moral quandaries yeah. as well. And and, it, and and nothing you do is, is looks, the right answer. Yeah. It's, it, it's, I like the games that challenge you with a, with a new kind of theme where it's not just like killing orcs or goblins or whatever. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. One of the worst, uh, one of the worst. Apparently is- this game is like, you just start playing like the rule. It's one of those, uh, um, Oh yeah. Program the rule books, right or, or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, no, it's like one of those things where like, uh, they, uh, like one of the worst decisions I ever had in the computer game that I had to make was like, I sent my looter to like this spot and, and they go into this house and like the first thing you walk in, and like the fridge is like full of food and like you, you've been starving, you know? So it's like, holy cow. And not only that, but in like the pantry, there's like canned food that's going to like keep. Right. And then like, and then you find like there's electronics and you find all this stuff. And then finally, like the person that's at the house, like comes and finds you and you realize it's like an elderly couple that somehow hadn't been found yet. And you realize and they can't fight you. You can take every single thing they have. And, and you realize it, but you realize if you take everything, you're basically, you're executing them, basically. They won't have any food. They won't have any water. They won't be able to survive, and they're going to die. But you have, so you have to kind of make the decision, well, do I take, and if you take all the food, it's like, yeah, fine. You get all the food. You've got enough food to feed your people now for the next three, four days, and it actually will help you build up, but it's like bad. And there's like a combat system. So like you, if you find a weapon, you find a gun, you can carry it with you and you go looting. But then if you actually like kill somebody, like that person becomes like, cause you're not a soldier. They, they're not used yeah. to the idea of killing somebody. So that person like actually like becomes morose and like won't do anything. And they become depressed and could possibly kill themselves. If you leave them at the house by themselves, you know, you come back and they've, they've killed themselves. So I wonder if they've integrated that into the, did you get the concrete forest? Yes. <laughs> oh man, sorry. You know, knock, knock on wood. I don't get that. It's weird. I don't know. Maybe it's because I have kids or something. I, I since I started yeah, taking whatever. the emergency packs, I haven't gotten it in a year now. You know Not that emergency that emergency pack thing does nothing for you. You do realize that, other than maybe homeopathy. But anyway, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. Anyway, I I hope the board game covers some of that feeling because it's got a paragraph book. Mm-hmm. Right, like a choose your own adventure. I don't. I mean, I, I'm not exactly sure how it works. But I know it's got a big, thick paragraph book, and you have to survive nine days. So hopefully, it covers some of those uh, those cool. You know what uh, other game looked good at Origins? There's another game I kept that kept catching my eye. I don't think it was for sale, and I didn't learn anything about it. But that Unearth Games by the guys that did Boss Monster, just the artwork alone. Yeah, I wanted to pick up that game. That banner I, that they had. What, it, what is that called? Isometric something, but yeah. it's beautiful. I, I played. I mean, I think it would be a little light for you. I mean, honestly, but uh, yeah. But um, it was fun. I mean, uh, you can go to their 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 website right now, and you can for thirty dollars you can pre order it, and they'll they'll ship it to you for free. So I wonder, I wonder if I can get it for free anyway. Let me check. <laughs> well, maybe. Um, but yeah, I was like, I'll go to Brotherwise Games and give them twenty nine ninety five. I forget. I got a board game expense account. I can buy anything I want. <laughs> Uh, so, did anybody actually play the Sidereal Confluence game? I know I got it. it. I bought it. I played it since I got home, and, and it is fantastic. Is it really? Several people I talked to were looking for it, but I didn't, I didn't ever see anyone playing it. So, so give us the oh, elevator pitch of it. It's as crazy as you think it is. I mean... I mean, the big thing is, I, I actually I sat down and I played two rounds of it with uh, Johnny G and his entourage, and um, it's I mean it, it's more there's more to it than than you'd think. I mean, you you think it's just okay, throw, throw these cubes around, but each person has their own little board and the things that they can do with it. Um, I really hate games. I I'll say this: I hate games that you when you have stuff that you want to keep behind your screen, and they give you like a really tiny screen. I, I, I just maybe it's the dungeon master in me or something, but I really, I really like a bigger screen. You know, like I, so, like you get the screen that's basically as big as one of my hands, and it's kind of curved. So it's like your little secret area is like maybe a you know three inch by three inch spot, 
I don't want to hear about your little secret. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like you do the whole thing where it's like, okay, and you're playing and, and like when you're doing the trading, like basically um, the trading ends when uh, a certain number of people that are sitting at the table all agree that trading ends and they just make a hand gesture, you know, where they say they're done trading. And as soon as you have a certain number of people, then the trading's done. So even if you want to trade and keep trading, uh, they can end it, you know, and, and like enough people so they can kind of stonewall you if they know you want uh, to get a, a, a certain thing or, or, or whatever. Um, so and then like you take the cubes you got and you can kind of turn them into other cubes, turn them into points and things like that. And then once everybody's done doing that and everybody does that at the same time, right? You know, you're just and it isn't like one person takes a turn. So everybody gets done with that and then you go back into trading again. And and so hopefully and it does it does actually um satisfy a little bit of the long-term planning uh, 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 thing that I like where it's like, okay, well this round I can trade this and I can turn it into this. And then I know these people will, will want, you know, this type of product and I'll be able to trade that to be able to get this kind of thing, you know? So, um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I, I did play a, a small sample size of it. Um, I, I wish I, 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 I'm going to the lake with my in-laws this weekend, so I, I, I really I was kind of looking forward to maybe possibly having a board game weekend, but um, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, plus, I'm I'm busy uh, pounding away trying to make uh, make the Kickstarter page for Seth Jaffe's Crusaders game, so that's taking up a lot of my spare time as well. So, slave driver, damn you, Seth! I had two games from WizKids that caught my eye. Besides sidereal confluence, was banishing and fantasy realms. The fantasy realms which I game bought. is fantasy realms is great. That that for a I mean, you played it. Yes, played it? Yeah, like okay. when, it, when, it, when like, I saw the demo, I was like, I'm going to get it. Fifty three cards and they're all different. Yeah, and and they had the promo, so you have fifty four cards and they're all different. And you and you basically you start off with your hand and you start playing them and then you try to end up with the best hand at the end. It's draw a card, discard a card. Yeah. And you try to make your best combo. Kind of reminded me of greed. Yep. A little bit. Um, so you're a, trying, a you're, much you're maligned, make... a much maligned game, greed. I don't know why that people, no, people didn't like that. Awesome. I don't know what what the deal is with greed. I guess I it's the theme. Uh, oh, the it probably should have been dungeons and monsters and orcs and. Goblins and whistle. Well, then, for oh, whatever God. reason, people got it stuck in their head that that you know Donald X just isn't uh, isn't like that or whatever. I Greed don't know. is awesome. Greed anyway, is awesome. Fantasy Realms. If you played it, I'm gonna. I mean, I I just saw the demo and I'm like, that's my kind of game. So you see an awesome game. You guys don't tell me. Thanks. Appreciate it. It came well, late. The best. I think you had already taken off or something. Uh, okay. The Sorry. best insert of okay. Origins definitely goes to Baron Park. That is. Uh... Oh yeah. Wait. Yeah. What's that about? Wait, I, I took a picture. I, I took a picture. It. I saw that. I was like, "This is guys, useless. Why is it?" Did you guys figure it out? How to how to assemble? Yeah, it? I figured out how to put it together. Wait, wait. I still didn't see it used. There's actually a um a photo. There's a picture in the box of how to put it together. Yes. Wait, you're distracting me from my other game, Banishing. Did you, anybody play the Banishing? No. Yeah. Oh my god, the Banishing is awesome. It's a co-op game. With twelve or something different character types, they're fantasy based, and you're trying to beat the game. It's it's great. I thought the, all the co-ops had been made before, but this one is really great. What are you eating there, Seth? I'm trying to yeah find that picture. Uh, just some cereal. I didn't have a whole lot in the house, <clears throat> so and I didn't have dinner today. So I ate my leftover French fries from Red Robin last night. And Cheerios. Leftover French fries. Leftover French fries. How is that possible? I got the expansion to automobiles from AEG in the mail on on unexpected, and um, I was kind of like, oh, I I wish I owned automobiles. (laughs) 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 Maybe it was like a clue to buy it. Did AEG send it or did David send it? AEG just sent it. Oh, the new, um, I guess it's it's based on the um, Mystic Veil vale system. It's the, I can't God, I remember the name. Something yeah, Darkness. Know. Something Darkness or Something Evil. Oh, yeah. Edge of it's Darkness. The full Edge of Darkness. What, say it again. So. What is it? Well, Gibson movie. The, the, the full-on game that he had originally designed before they said we wanted to. That, uh, 
looks amazing. <laughs> what game? So Scott, what about Some, Edge of Darkness? Something about Edge of Darkness, like just the whole scope of it, right? It's the hey, it's the, it. it's the it's the uh, uh, the clear card overlay, you know, for Mystic Mail, but in a full. There you go, Keith. How, did you yeah, did you fine. figure that on your own, or did you look yes, at the actual? Yes, I figured diagram? it. Yeah. So I took a picture of the diagram after after failing the IQ test of putting it together. I took a picture. Is that going to come out? There it is. Yeah. <laughs> so that picture is on one of the punch boards. I don't yes. Know, is it coming through? Yeah, I yeah. saw it in the, um, on the punch board. Yeah. Um, but here's it, the thing. It that picture is about this big on the punch board. This is useless. <laughs> it doesn't hold the game right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of dumb. I can't believe they have that in there. I, they had leftover over. punch board and nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, yeah, we can't wipe our butt with punch. What else can we do? Let's make an insert. People just wanted to uh, get people to do it, right? And I like this game, too. So. The game is good, yeah. Have you played the advanced oh, yeah. version? That's the way to play it. But I, I actually played it with my 9-year-old, my 13-year-old, and the wife who don't normally play games with me. I didn't use the advanced version, just the regular, and they got it right away. So next we'll make them play the advanced version, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> What's the advanced version? It's the goals where you have the, the – uh, basically have three rivers connected or whatever to get bonus points. Yeah, there's you draw there's people achievements at the end. Yeah. 12 or 15 people? achievements or something like that, and you have to – you pick four. For every people, game. Kept, people kept talking about the new Days of Wonder game that was there too. Anybody play that? Pick it Yam up. Yamata. Yamata. Yeah. Is that any good? Have All I've heard is as a spiritual successor to Five Tribes. I there's no way. The term there's spiritual no successor because I feel like it has zero meaning. No, there's no way it's a spiritual. No. I don't even know what that means. I just I I looked at the there's it's not Five Tribes. No. It has a nice looking art. It's I think it's by the same guy as Five Tribes. Don't they all? Yes, yeah, same guy. Well, I don't know anything about it. Really so, if it's a spiritual successor to Five Tribes, does it mean you never want to play it after three plays? <laughs> so, <can you> <laughs> does it mean I'd rather stab out my eyes than play with the fifth player they're coming out with? <laughs> as the spiritual successor to Terra Prime, so everyone can say, what's Terra Prime? Yes. No, I, I remember. I mean, I remember my first play of of Five Tribes. I was like, "This is really cool." And like my second time, I was like, "Yeah, it's, it's okay." And my third one, I was like, "Come on, keep bringing the cool." And it just yeah. and it just wasn't. And then I think I think uh, Barry was the one who said, "Oh, you mean you mean sit around and watch your friends play?" Yeah, <laughs> what's what's the name that of Five the first play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was okay. And then I played with somebody that had super AP, and I was like, "Nope." Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, it's it's got so much downtime waiting to get to do your thing. It's the same reason that I couldn't get Grand Austria Hotel. I like that game, but that play order, that serpentine, when you went first, it's, oh god, last, yeah. like, oh my god, just bah! grab <laughs> grab grab a magazine and head for the bathroom. <laughs> Even with two players, it was like that. Mm -hmm. oh, mm. Killed me. And otherwise, a good game. That killed it. That, that was a deal breaker. Yeah, Grand Austria is good. I really like it. Yeah, I do too. <clears throat> it's just uh, uh, when, yeah. I, when I first played right. Five Tribes, and I probably still should, still true. I don't I don't understand why that game doesn't take four hours. It seems like it should take forever. I feel like that would induce Those people on an so fast. Even people who are not susceptible <laughs> to it. It's me punching people that keeps it from taking four yeah. hours. Yeah, thirty second rule. Like, hurry up, or I'm just going to throw your... Call. But surprisingly, though, but it's surprising that it doesn't It doesn't take four hours. It should. I don't understand why it doesn't. It, it can. I've seen it take quite a while. Eventually, you run out of meeples to pick up. That's the one thing that keeps it going. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm going to look up Yamata here and see Did what that's about. But he played Deadline, another WizKids game. No, but it's, it's from uh, Mr. West, so... I, 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 I have high hopes for it. Every time 
every time I go by with the WizKids booth at Origins or Gen Con or anything, I always just get like struck by like there are people that literally spend their life playing hero clicks. Never occurred to me. Like there are people that's like that's their thing. That's what they do. Did, did you see the five hundred people, clicks. the five hundred people sitting at the tables. Like it was near the BGG booth. Like they were right across from us. Yeah, it was completely packed. They had about four, maybe fifty tables, maybe even more than that, maybe a hundred tables. Hey, to be, the whole time. To be completely fair, um, I used to play Hero Clicks a lot. I played it with the DC Silver Age stuff. That was a lot of fun. I mean, that was. I mean, it was. It was. You know, I mean, it was just uh, a few of my friends and I. We uh, we kind of collected the figures, and we would have huge. You know, four hundred point uh, uh, battles. Uh, you know, just sprawling over the tabletop, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I definitely get why people get into the game because it is. You know, you're you're playing with you yeah. know the yeah. heroes, and, and it's fun. Nothing against the guys that do it. I'm just saying, I never see them until that convention. Yep. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's I'll tell convention. you what, you get in their way when the doors open at Gen Con, they will run you the F over to get to their hero click. Oh, what was, yeah. What was the hero uh, clicks exclusive this year? Don't they do like one exclusive figure? Gen Con has like, there's usually five figures that are exclusive to Gen Con. And if you but aren't there the first day, you don't Gen get them. Anymore. But the line, there must have been a, something exclusive because the line. No, so they had exclusive ones at Origin. They're all cool stuff now. They, had they didn't have a booth at Gen Con last year. Yeah, that's true. It was two years ago they tried to run me over. Uh, Colossal Sinestro, Cyber Shredder, Giant Man with Pin Particle Tank, Muhammad Ali versus Superman, uh, Plastic so the Man, cool. and Zeus. The, with that. the Muhammad Ali ring was pretty badass looking. I almost bought it myself. The big and thing these things those, are like ninety bucks a piece. Well, yeah, but the big thing is those is those. There's a lot of guys that go there to buy it because they can turn around and wait a month and then sell it for you know and four times the price. On, right. No. They pay for the expense. Yeah. yeah. They don't do Gen Con anymore because they got into a big fight with Gen Con two years ago. Oh, yeah? Uh, what about? About their lines around their booth or something. So like their, a line about their booth was they kept telling, they kept lining people outside the hall and making them walk over. Uh, and they they basically, Gen Con told them like three or four times they have to control their line better. And they basically said, okay, we'll forget it. We're not coming back next year. Okay. I so think, I think that Origins is, is going to get as big as Gen Con. So do I. No. So How, what, in 10 years? How? I don't yeah, think yeah. That, in three, three to five years, Lance. I don't think Origins can physically handle no. the Col- Gen Con. No, there's no way. Columbus can't do it. Not well, that big. No, he can't do it. But I, neither can like Indy. I think 30,000. I'm just throwing out a crazy p- prediction that we're going to be basically feeling the same pressure that we feel at Gen Con at Origins in three to five years. No, now, I think Scott, when you say Indy can't do it, do you mean uh, Indianapolis Convention Center? Or the uh, no, the Indy, the Indy Hotels and Convention Center is at its max right now. I mean, well, it's been at its max forever. I mean, that it hasn't stopped them. I think the Convention Center because they took over the Lucas Oil thing and they're not using all of that area. But yeah, the city's done. The city's maxed out. That's, that, that's what I mean. Columbus is going to be the same way. Yeah, the it, it's a smaller scale. It's going to be. What, do you, they, what, what, what was the? Did they publish the attendance? Yeah, seventeen thousand. How much was the last year? Sixteen thousand. That's a ten percent increase. That's a ten percent increase. It's well, been a they, 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 they didn't give exact rounded. It's ten percent. Ten percent increase up. So, whatever sixteen thousand and whatever last year, it's seventeen thousand and whatever this year. So. Okay. Keith, what, don't say it doubled since you started going. I just think it's gonna be, it's gonna be painful again. Like, you know, I, Col- Origins is very pleasant. Yeah. Like I, I have no problems with Origins, whereas Gen Con is rough. You know, I mean, it's Gen Con just needs to go to Chicago and just do it. Just make no, it happen. No, you can't do it in Chicago. Why? Because the hotels are not near the convention center in Chicago. Yeah, but they've yeah. got the lines that run all over the place and you can get there in like 10 minutes. But people so freak out when they have to take I don't the, know. Yeah, I don't know. They have to yeah, I'm just saying. The freaking, uh, when you're, green when you're line. carrying like boxes and well, gear you gotta walk and stuff. And or or the hotel right next to Gen Con is quite a walk to your hotel room. Exactly. I've been saying that I think Origins is the new Gen Con because people are going to get fed up not getting a hotel room or with just the extraordinary 
amount of piles of people. That I'm I mean, I was, just, I was just kind of observing, right? We're not attendees, right? We're just exhibitors. But Origin. if you wanted to play games at, Gen- at Origins, it seems real easy to. I mean... I have said repeatedly it, over and over again that if, if, if I didn't... If I wasn't working for TMG or whatever company I was working for, there is no way on earth I'd go back to Gen Con. Yeah, I, I not, not even to see me. I've never been to Gen Con except as an exhibitor. I wouldn't. Yeah. I want to. It's too commercial. Like I don't want to buy stuff. If I go to a convention, I want to play games. It's yeah. too commercial. But people are play. going to buy your games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's this double-edged sword we ride. Where we want to play and so, have and sell. Right. No, I'm saying like I I'm not the average gamer that you know is a consumer of games. So. I wouldn't go to Gen Con because I don't shop. That's it. I'm well, not buying any more Seth Jaffe games. No more Seth Jaffe. <laughs> All right, you're lost. <laughs> you, guys but are, the you guys are forgetting how many people are there actually playing games. We're not playing there's games because we're doing other stuff. There's but a lot of people playing events games. events are yeah. insane. There's so there, many yeah. events. Yeah. And there are so many people playing. Like yeah. But I mean, I, I, it's the idea that you don't really get games played at, at the convention is not just us. It isn't just like right back. us screw jobs that go there and, and don't end up playing very many games. There's a lot of people that do the exact same thing, just the one. But I know a lot of people that go there and they book their calendar full of events. And they but you, you, but you can play games if you want to. Yeah. I exactly. disagree with you there wholeheartedly. Uh, I think most average people go there. They play a shitload of games at yeah. Origins. Yeah, uh, I you be know I've heard I've that. heard from many people that go there that that just that aren't you know us media idiots or or work it that you know it's just there's too much going on. I mean it's just yeah. it, it you know you walk you walk that well, crowd in 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 the in like the the, the exhibit hall. And it's just like you walk around there. I mean, it's just like you you could literally spend every single day in that convention hall and not see everything. I mean, right, right. Gen- you don't have to. Well, we're talking about Jack. Gen- yeah. yeah, right. But you don't yeah. have to. And there's people who just don't who go just to play games. I'm yeah. not denying there are, but there are a lot of people who go there with no intention of playing any games. No, I'm and, sure and, there are because there's sixty thousand people. But, and, I mean, and the yeah. thing is, that place is, is that you know those 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 people at Gen Con. You know, finding a, a decent place to play a game is effing impossible. In, in, Only in for Con. open gaming. If you buy a ticketed event, you have a guaranteed seat. And that's but, but yeah, but but have you seen in some of those little rooms? They're just as bad as that open gaming area. They're just I, as I bad. I've played in those rooms. They're, they're crammed up against each other. The whole place smells. You know, it's just, it isn't a great area to play games. I mean, I mean, there are 70,000 events. 700 seats on Lucas Oil Field this year for open gaming. Yeah. That's well, for game. library gaming. You have 700? To, 700. So 1%? There's there's 600 tickets for every uh, session, and there was there was 100 weekend passes. Hmm. I, don't I'm sure uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But... Uh, I think that I think that Origins needs needs a lot of organizational work before it can compete with Gen Con. It, like people were struggling, like with my events, like really difficult to, to sign up for them, really difficult to to find actually the place to them. What did you post? They didn't post the events um, until uh, the, the yeah. couple of days before. They right. There's no they online had, way to even sign up for things. I think they had some resignations. Up. Late in the game, yeah, they did. And that's yeah, kind of what I'm that referring hurt. to. Just sort of, yeah. Clearly. I mean, I don't know if I want to blame that per- those people, but like, when you, if you have like a key person resign a couple months or a month, be- a couple, you know, two, three months before the convention, you're, yeah, you got to scramble, man. I mean, yeah. I can't even imagine what would happen to BGG. I, I'd like to see how they respond to to that situation, how they fix it. I think if they, I, I, think I don't know whether or not they figure that out. If I think if they figure that out where it makes, you know, I think their online site, it needs work. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. But. Come on, GeoCities websites are great. Yes. I'm just trying. Yeah. Just what, throwing are you still it doing here. construction on that meme structure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also their mascot. My, my taxi driver dropped me off in a construction zone. I was like, uh, "Is there another entrance?" And there was. I, I just don't know. Oh, look, look at Mister Big Bucks taking a taxi, not even waiting for the Uber. No, Ooh, paying, the, uh, paying the outlandish. Uh, yo, and, hey, eighty-seven million dollars. 
87 million dollars i can see why you know just money doesn't saying, mean anything to you did yeah. the number change or something what are, what are you what are you, you quoting a different number i thought what it's worth said 86 or 87 million the other day oh man what you were all shite to scott no, no. The first day, I came in. I came in on Wednesday oh, morning because I was like working on Tuesday night. He 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 got there late because he was busy counting money. It happened. <laughs> got to do what we got to do, Lance. Yeah. Yeah. It was more fun when you when you argued about it, but you're kind of ruining it now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Anthony, is tell me what back? I should say. So, say again. Was that Barry? Anthony, you're going to PAX. I'm going to PAX. I'm I'm curious to see how Philly handles this because they What's don't the have any hotels around. I'm not sure. Have they posted any numbers? They haven't crap, posted they. anything yet. Yeah. You're uh, curious about what you guys are gonna do? Do you guys Board have Geek, dot com is eighty four and a half. Eighty four no and three quarters. Okay. Eighty four okay. million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Congratulations. I'm just curious like do you guys do ticket events at uh, uh no they don't do it they're not doing any no. they're doing i think like one tournament thing but everything else is pretty much open gaming i think this is just a few more thing you know so i saw their cool. library it, it looks like a one cage from the but... uh, probably. <laughs> oh okay anthony i know you're gonna i know you probably have a have a an opinion on this and i want to hear what you have to say uh so the conan game they they canceled it even though they had like 120 grand. Oh, the pre-painted. Game? We, we were talking about it before we went live, and the weird thing about it is the cancellation notice that they they sent out is what makes this whole thing a little weird. Because it sounds like they they are not doing it, but it also sounds like they have the money to do it anyway without the Kickstarter. Uh, so I don't know if they're actually going to do it. They're not going to do it. You know, they're not doing Kickstarter anymore. They're not going to even try, attempt to do really? a Kickstarter anymore. But it, it, the wording on it sounded like they said that they are fortunate enough to have the funding they need to to produce the game. You think? <laughs> that's no. That's what it says. It says they had outside of the project itself, outside of doing the Kickstarter, they already had enough money to produce the game. Hmm. So the question uh, now that becomes, game looks really great, actually. Right. So the question wondering. now becomes: Why don't you take the hundred and hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars you get from the Kickstarter, and just pay for it, and then put it out like that? I mean, it, is I, again? I don't know. Is this this big stigmata that you know the game only made one hundred and fifty thousand on Kickstarter, so no one's going to want it after? It's a. It's not a cheap game. No. Did they and need to change the MSRP? Because that might might have been what it was. It, it wasn't cheap because it's all hand painted miniatures. I mean, uh, pre painted miniatures, and which they look amazing. Right, I, they demoed it. So, oh, but insane. but like yeah. part of the stuff that they were doing, uh, Reaper was doing part of the the terrain. I think Reaper was making yeah. the. the uh -huh. So I think they've given Reaper the the go ahead to go ahead and make the terrain, and sell it on their own. So it sounds like they're still going to make the game, kind of. I don't really know. It looks, they put so much into this. I can't see them just turning around and going, all right, no, we're giving up. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know if they're going to rework it, you know, and get it to a price point where, you know, they can make it and release it and give it a price that people will pay for it. Because it's not cheap. And what that's, on that's the Yeah, you think you would want to know how much to make, right? Like, yeah. By virtue of your pre-order. Yeah, and that's the weird thing. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to their Kickstarter yeah. and read the thing that they wrote because it's kind of it's just it's just worded kind of weird. It's like we're you know, we're not coming, we're giving up the Kickstarter thing, but we already can make the game. So it's kind of like, oh, well, then why did you need Kickstarter? But maybe it's the exclusive shit that's way on down with the Kickstarter. Uh, this is the, the second time they did it. The actually, like ten percent fee. Right, because the first time they did it, they did it with uh, the optional miniatures. Now they put the miniatures in everything because they cause they got a lot of people saying, "Oh, well, why would I want well, not miniatures? It's going to cost me more to buy the miniatures separate and blah blah blah." But uh, hmm. I gotta find it. the one that drove me crazy about it was um, uh, 
that, that it was just it, yeah. It's like okay, so if you had the money, why did you do the why did you do the Kickstarter? And then the whole the whole like uh, you know you you just it's one of those things where you kind of get the opinion this is like a weird cash grab kind of thing, you know? Like they were expecting how much money to like actually make it worth their while, and they didn't get that. Okay. So. Which always bothers me about a Kickstarter, when there's yeah. like a, there's a, uh, uh, I don't know, someone right. chewing, chewing peanut brittle in their microphone. So, so here it is. It says, hi all. It seems <laughs> clear we haven't managed to put together a package compelling enough for most Kickstarter backers. As we stated on the project's main page, we have financing to manufacture from regardless of the amount raised. But given the relatively low numbers of backers, we've decided it's best to move on. That's how it's. That's how it starts. So it's like, yeah. okay, so you have enough. Are you still going to make it? You're not going to make it. Um, we love our game and extremely proud of it. It's been a joy to run at game stores and conventions across the country, and we appreciate all the good times uh, we've had with our fellow gamers. We're also ex extremely proud of what we accomplished with the miniatures time and time again. Those who look at the real life production models at those same stores and conventions have told us how impressed they are with them, then posted their delight on social media. But ultimately, this kind of product at the price we need to charge, given our scale and premium paint work, just doesn't seem a good match for Kickstarter. Uh, nor is it possible to offer the kind of discount distribution and retail are used to. So for that reason, we're going to shut down the project once and for all. So I'm guessing that that part there means they're shutting the whole thing down. Um, but I can't imagine how much money they've put into this already. Yeah. It, it just it doesn't make any that. sense. Sounds like like that's that's what their MSRP was based on a much higher number of backers, and they realized they're not going to get it, and they can't deliver on these features, so they have to pare down on I agree. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I could have said it better. <laughs> that is exactly what I was saying it's earlier. Ah, yep. <laughs> oh, Brent, your poor microphone. <laughs> It sounds like you're making love to that microphone. <laughs> That's a Logitech headset. Mm -hmm. Motorboat. Is it, is it in your beard? Or <laughs> you have to reboot those things every once in a while. Yeah. No, but I think I think what Brent was saying is true. It's like sometimes people like get to um, they just. Well, I think we all agreed that uh, what you did, uh, Tiny Epic Games ran into the same thing too, where they thought they were going to get <laughs> Tiny Epic Games. <laughs> <laughs> Game, gambling, games. gambling games, gambling games. Well, that's what they're known as. You know, you know what I was talking about. Um, it, it just illustrated the point that yeah, I mean, just that they they expected their Kickstarter to get to X, and then it didn't get there. You know, and it was like, oh, well, you know, we need, you know, whatever. We 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 need it to be, you know, uh, six hundred six hundred grand or something or whatever. You know, so uh, yeah. I mean, it's just—it's it's a weird thing. It's a weird business that they go through. Yeah, Kickstarter is a little bit of a trap for MSRP because you have to—it's a to trap. Set, you have to set your MSRP before you know how many people want the game. You can't. Yeah. And, and like your scale determines how much it's going to cost to manufacture something. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I run into this problem actually with my games a little bit too. Fortunately, I make card games, so they're cheaper to make. So there's some leeway, but. Yeah, you, you, you assume that your game is going to cost one thing, and then a ton of people want it, and then it can be a lot cheaper. It's what got um, you got it's what got exploding kittens into so much trouble, right? Because they uh, yeah. they uh, asked for a, a higher amount for the Kickstarter than they actually needed after like the game blew up, because they they made a bajillion copies, and then Walmart wanted to sell it for five bucks cheaper, and they were like, yeah, we can afford to do that, why not? And then they did it, and it made everybody mad, and then they just rolled around a hundred dollar bills. <laughs> is my mic any better? Or yes, is yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, no. yeah, I actually wish it was still garbled when you said it's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see that? Um, and this isn't funny by any means, but um, uh, that the, uh, like they they like last year 
was like one of the first years in a long, long time uh, that a, uh, a bullfighter in Spain was killed by a bull. Oh, really? And uh, and like and then like and then this just like in the last couple of days, another one got killed by a bull. Well, what oh. do you expect when you're antagonized something with horse? Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, it, it, it's it's just it's one of those things that it, it doesn't uh, normally happen, and it, it and strangely it's happened, and people forget like like they actually kill the bull. Yeah, like, in, yeah. In, 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 I was about to say it, so it's hard to get really like irate about like the tragedy yeah. of the situation. What the, what did they I do? think the ratio is nine hundred to one or something like that. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, it's just. Uh, it's like well, the, it's like it's like running with the bulls. I've always like you know people say, "Oh, wouldn't you love to do that?" No, no. I mean, unless I was like way at the front, you know, just like where I was, no chance. You know, maybe 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 I sniffed bull crap at some point, but I mean, like, yeah. Isn't that entire like whole like quote unquote sport completely pointless if there's no chance that the bullfighter gets killed? It's it's the the pageantry. Yeah, yeah. Of, of, of slaying the cow, you know. So, it seems like a really elaborate way to make a hamburger. You know, it's one of those things yeah. where I, I, I would hope, I would hope that, like, I would hope that if the, if, if, if not, this is not, I'm not trying to be grim because, you know, my heart goes out to their family and and, and the loss that they have and everything like that. But you the know, bull, the, you know, they probably kill the cow. They kill the bull, right? You would think that they yeah. would like say, okay, you win, you know, and this let him go. Be a bull, right? They, and you, they, they kill it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that is kind of fucked up. I thought. Yeah, I mean, one reason he didn't I earn his freedom yeah. for the Spurs. Yeah, yeah he no, gets they, free. They, just live in the streets of Madrid. No, <laughs> they kill it. They they torture it the whole time they're in the ring. You know, they're I mean, it's all screwed up. Even shit. Shit. yeah, because they're, they're like hucking spears in it the whole time, right? Yeah, yeah. I never did agree with what? that. You know? I've killed animals, but with me, it's one shot, one kill. You know, it's put them out of their misery. <laughs> Yeah, you weren't, weren't wearing that whole matador setup when you did it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Only when his wife asks. <laughs> I I got booted out. What the hell are we talking about? Bullfighting. <laughs> we were talking about his pajamas. Um, I, I, yeah, go ahead. I played Diva Pam Pamplomina. That's a pretty good game. For me, the uh, the best. Um, the best ever. Uh, Wait, hold fight. on. Are we also be chewing something? Because I'll go get something. Yes. Yeah, go <laughs> for me, for me, the best ever bullfight was uh, was Bugs Bunny. And that the is the best bullfight. Yes. What a nin cow poop. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have like an anvil behind his? Uh, his he had everything behind it. You know, the bull runs through the uh, boards, and he. Hammers down the horn, so he's stuck yeah. to it. <laughs> I, I just like uh, when, when the um, what a what an imbul soul was another one instead of imbecile. No, I like to when he um, uh, he said to whatever was like the the because it was Fernando, wasn't it Fernando the bull? Fernand the bull, I think. Yeah, Fernand the bull or something like that. And I I um, I remember that uh, when when he comes up and Bugs Bunny like. Taps him on the shoulder because he's sharpening his horns on the on the on the on the on the wheel, <laughs> and then the bull cue, chalk. Yeah, and then and then he and he, and he and he taps him on the shoulder, and the bull turns around and he puts two like ends of a giant rubber band around both of his horns, and he pulls it all the way back to where he's got a giant rock, and like he puts the rock and lets go. <laughs> the camera, the camera shows the rock, and then just stars. You know what it is. <laughs> So I, I got a degree in animation, and I actually had to watch that episode for homework. <laughs> I had to do a report on it. <laughs> those, hey, those, those. What's your cartoons while you're high is not a degree in animation. <laughs> Forest, you can't uh, prove that. <laughs> no, so no, the, the old Bugs Bunny cartoons, man, they were just they were the best. They were the absolute best. Oh yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, I, I've said this many times, but I remember Chuck Jones, uh, Warner Brothers Studios. He once said, um, "He somebody asked him what his opinion of The Simpsons was, and he said the Sim he said the Simpsons are a fabulous animation, but they are not a cartoon." And they said, "Well, what's the difference?" And he said, "The difference is that if you turn down the volume of a cartoon, you still know what the story is." 
Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh, that's actually pretty cool. You know, you 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 know what the whole point of, of what you're watching without any sound. So kind of a neat way to look at things like that. So, um, but of course, the the greatest uh, the greatest, in my opinion, uh, Bugs Bunny cartoon is, of course, uh, All Meets Bob, Line. No, Robin Hood Daffy is. Oh, oh I love that one. Oh, oh hot turn, Perry. Dad's been hot thrown. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! And away! <laughs> Yikes! And away! Yikes! And away! There, I, I, I can't name a greatest one because I think most of them are great. I can't either because I've never seen one. The dot and the line oh, is the best. Oh, yeah. oh no! Your generation, what the the channel, the... Which one? The dot and the line. Isn't that a Bugs Bunny cartoon? No. Yeah, it is. No. What is it about? I saw it on a Saturday morning. Well, th there was lots of cartoons on Saturday morning. Okay. Alibaba Bunny is my favorite. It's Chuck Jones, made by Chuck Jones and Wes Goldman. All right, I will, I will oh, give whatever. it up. Okay, and, forget uh, it. it. It's not in your Looney Tunes thing, whatever. I think it was on Looney Tunes, though. I will, I will give it up that... Um, I will give it up that uh, the uh, that 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 the Alibaba Robin Hood or Bugs Bunny Alibaba was a good one. That, that's what consequences, consequences. As long as I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite was the. Uh, right, 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 down, 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 down. I, I liked <laughs> Wabbit Season. Wabbit yeah, season. Duck yeah. Season, Wabbit Season. Uh, you know, they did it's so baseball many. season. <laughs> after after they did so many of those 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 Bugs Bunny. Uh, Daffy ones. There was just one. I forget where it was, but like it was once again Bugs Bunny and Daffy, and they're and 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 they're being chased uh, by Elmer Fudd, and they both jump into the hole in the ground, and it was just it, it was a, such an excellent little uh, thing where they and they hear the running and they both like listen ahead and they and they, doom, doom, they hear him run off, and then so Bugs Bunny goes, "Hey Daffy, poke your head up and see if he's still around," <laughs> and uh, and so he jumps up to the the the, the, the hole. And he's like pulling himself up like a pull up, really slow. And as soon as his head gets out of the hole, you can't see. You hear the shotgun go off, and his legs just go go like this, and he falls on the ground. And then Bugs Bunny, he's like, "Is he still there?" And he sits up, and he's got holes all over himself, still lurking about. <laughs> and he's like, "Well, here's the plan: you jump up and lead him away, while I can make, so I can get, so I can make an escape, and then." Just straight up, no more for me, thanks. I'm driving. <laughs> I was like, oh, a drunk driving joke in the 19, 1940s. How, how, how topical. And, and hair raising hair is a good one, too. Hair raising hair is also very good. Come um, back here. What's opera <laughs> Uh, and what's Opera Doc, of course. That one's the best. What's Opera Doc and the one where Daffy Duck takes on the animator. Those are the two best. Oh, Duck Amuck. Yeah, Duck Amuck. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, I, uh, uh, I, the line in there that I, for some reason I always end up saying is like, uh, what a way to run a railroad. Like when he's all, he's all pissed off because like the, 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 the top keeps coming down at him and he draws that stick and he puts the stick. To, he's like, oh, what a way to run a railroad. Uh, <laughs> Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh, over fields we go, laughing all the way. Would it be too much to ask if we could make up our minds? Yeah. Ah, yeah, that was a good one. Lance, what did Joe's not seen any of these? No, he's young. I've, I've never seen a, a a real Bugs Bunny cartoon. Yeah, you've got oh, them shitty God. cartoons now. I they really should still go buy the Looney Tunes Golden Breakfast in volumes one through five or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, they're they're right yeah that that sounds like a good use of my time. They, 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 I mean, dude, you will you will laugh. Well, maybe you won't, but I mean, maybe you, you will laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. They are, and if you don't, you're dead inside. So it's okay. It's yeah. I mean I mean there's there's stuff that isn't good. I mean. Um, Tweety and, and Sylvester kind of get old a little bit. Any, anything with the two things chasing each other. I mean, even even I mean, Roadrun. Isn't that all it is? No. Isn't that uh, all Looney Tunes is? No, no, it, no, it it's like oh, and also the one the one with the frog. I forget what it's called, but like the uh, the Michigan J Bullfrog. 
yeah, the scene frog is 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 great. Uh, which had which which they cut it out. So like when he when he opens up the theater with the singing frog, <laughs> he says, uh, like like admission like ten dollars, and then he brings he comes out and he puts out another sign that says admission one dollar, and then he comes out again. He puts another sign that says free admission, and nobody still comes out. And then he puts out a sign that says free beer, and then people just rah go crazy and run in right. In like later things to like, so it wasn't because they didn't want kids to see it. They when they he put the free admission sign out, then they run crazy in. They didn't he didn't actually put the like the free beer sign out. Yeah. That was back when they tried to censor them all and and like they couldn't show kids being shot and you know not kids. I mean they couldn't show like <laughs> they couldn't show people getting shot because oh, they were worried back, that kids are going to shoot each other and yeah. back and, when you couldn't shoot kids on TV. Yeah, yeah. but I yeah. mean there's a lot of. Uh, Commentary on the times in a lot of those cartoons. Yeah, yeah so they're actually deeper than you think. You know, the World War II era ones, especially. Oh yeah. well, uh, you kind of want to avoid the real racist ones in World War II <laughs> era, but yeah. Um, yeah, there was a simpler time back then. One where well, I mean, they were being used as a propaganda tool. In the war. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't just for entertainment, right? There, there was a goal at times. Yeah, I don't know. It, it just they're good stuff. Barry, you were saying something I interrupted you like two minutes ago. Oh, that spinning thing. What the hell is it with the kids with that thing? Wasn't that used know. for <laughs> kids with autism? It's just something to mess that, with. Why, that's that's why Lance has it. Oh, okay. Okay. It's just something to occupy yourself with. It's just a toy. It's fun. Good. Seth, did you play any good prototypes at Origins? Can you see anything really cool? Yeah, I totally played something called Crusaders. <laughs> I knew you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I played so, it too. Well. <laughs> so I had a really good time at Origins. I did play Crusaders. So I taught to teach Lance, and he was playing with people. Um, I don't know Not if any of you guys tried it. But I played it. I wanted to. You, yeah, he played it. Um, I did play two of my prototypes twice each, which was really good. One that's, I feel like, very close to done, and the other one is sort of in the middle. Um, so I got some good progress or, or feedback on those and some ideas. And then I did play um, – one of the neat things about Origins see, compared to Gen Con, from my point of view, is that uh, I get – there are fewer meetings for me. Like they're not back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back every half hour or whatever. So there we can take our time a little bit, and we actually get to play like a full game with the designer. Um, which even if the game isn't finished or isn't that good or whatever, I, I usually like to finish or to play the play full game. Um, just to see how it goes, but also because I don't know, I like to, I, I so seldom get to play games. I like to be able to play the whole thing. So I played a number of games with in, in our pitches to completion, um, uh, several of which I, I had known about. Maybe we played an earlier version, or I, I you know, knew were were going to be potentially good. Um, but um, most of those were sort of like a, they were had made progress, but we'd asked them to uh, um, keep working on it before really you know, fully submitting it. Um, some were just, you know, not, not for us kind of thing or whatever. Um, but I must have played, uh, I don't know, a handful, like five or six at least. And, um, and then I played another one that I think I, that we're going to be probably doing. I actually, it wasn't from Origins. I actually had heard, played it at Gen Con like two years ago. And the designers uh, had submitted it to another company and they just got it back, I guess. And now they were, now we're going to look into it. Um, so I got to play that as well. So that was another prototype. Of a game called, well, I don't know what we'll call it, but it was called Villages. Um, and then I took home one from the publisher Speed Dating. Um, so the publisher Speed Dating event, if you're not familiar with that, it's just what it sounds like. Uh, designers go and sit, the, one designer at each table around a room, and then publishers go and they get they take like a five minute pitch, and then they, yeah. in five minutes they, you know, sound an alarm, ring a bell, whatever, and all the publishers get up and sit at the next table for the next pitch. So in a couple hours, you get, you know, you see all the games in the room. For a quick five-minute pitch and if you're interested i guess you could talk to the person or whatever um i've gone to many 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 of these events and taken many 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 pitches five-minute pitches um in the hundreds like 400 or 500 i counted one time how much it must have been and it's you know well over 400 pitches and in all those pitches i think we've we've been interested in a handful like five or six or seven and maybe we've published two or three um for one reason or another um so it's 
a very efficient way to look at lots of designs, but also it's a lot of uh, noise per unit signal, I guess. Um, so I don't usually end up taking any prototypes home from that. But we did take one home uh, this time. Uh, it was kind of a, a card drafting game with a sort of roller coaster tycoon type theme to it. Um, and I just played it today at the game store with some people to uh, check it out. Um, it's pretty solid. It's, it's uh, got a lot going on, going for it. Um, as I was playing it today, I think I thought of some things, some direction I might like to, some feedback to tell the designer. I don't know if it's uh, fully ready, but I think it's a really good start. Um, but yeah, so I actually played uh, quite a few prototypes. Did you play the most ambitious prototype? Skies? I didn't. Was I? I know of Sovereign Skies. I had played it uh, when it was in its old version. I forget what it was called, but on the floor at Gen Con a year or so ago, and we got, I think he got kicked out by some security guards or something. We were playing, um, is that guy's name Aaron Wilson? Is that his name? Uh, maybe, I don't know. I think um, we were, he was showing it to us, and, and it, we had a lot of comments, like a lot of feedback. Apparently, he had gone and, and, and at Unpub, he was telling a story about how, I don't know, he was really, well, so Carrie Rundle said I made him cry. With my feedback, but I don't know if that's accurate. But uh, apparently, um, he's worked on it since. And then I've joined this um, in a Slack group with some designers, and and he's in there. And he, I didn't realize it was the same guy because I didn't recognize the name. I didn't have the face to, to put it with. And um, he had a roll and write game, and I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll try it. So I printed it out and I tried it, and I thought, uh, this is kind of neat. It seems like it should be a board game, though, not a roll and write game. And he said, oh, that's funny because it's based on my my. Uh, board game that you actually played and I was like I played it what and I couldn't it wasn't similar enough that I remembered and then he explained you know who he was and what he was talking about and so then he took he made a board game version of his roll and write game that was based on his other board game so it's Sovereign Skies is, is like been through several iterations and much changed and I saw it in the publisher speed dating um, I think it's probably better than it was um, I don't know it didn't look like it was necessarily um, we, we weren't that, Andy and I weren't that interested in it um, at, at the moment. Um, but I thought it was a funny story that, like, the what what these things go through and uh, mm -hmm. stuff. The most ambitious prototype I saw, I didn't play it, but I watched some people playing it, was uh, TC Petty's game that he's been working on. Um, if you're not familiar, so TC is a designer. My he's father, father. Yeah, that? my father's work. Yeah. So for those that don't know, TC is a designer. He's uh, big in the Twitter amateur design community and whatever. He's got a couple games out. Um, Xenon Profiteer is probably uh, what you've heard of. Um, he had a Kickstarter running for actually two of his games from Dice Hate Me, but it didn't, it didn't <coughs> succeed. So those didn't happen. But he does have a Viva Java and Viva Java the Dice game or whatever are his games as well. So he's working on this really ambitious game called My Father's Work, which is actually a really neat idea. It's um, it's, it's a sort of a complicated worker placement game, but it's uh, over three generations. And each generation is basically like you're a mad scientist or whatever, and you're working on stuff. And then generation two is like you're working on you know your father's work. Like you, you're like a, a new generation of mad scientists, and you're working on your father's work. And um, as time goes on, there's a bunch of, there's injections of story like stuff happens you have to like read the story and then like make choices based on what's going on in the story and sometimes and it's based on a, it, there's a computer program that like tells you the parts of the story and it'll remember decisions you made so that that might actually have a game impact you know two generations down the road um which i didn't necessarily see exactly how the computer was working but um it, it's a really ambitious project and it's it, i think i heard that when in the play, play test they were playing Stuff like that happened. Like somebody in the early game, I don't know, made this choice to help these people or to whatever. And then, you know, way later, an hour later or something, um, because he had done that in the past, like he got a benefit when something happened. Um, and someone else didn't get that benefit because they didn't help the people or whatever. Um, and, and that's kind of a, you know, it's kind of like these legacy, legacy games and storytelling games and, you know, requires the computer or an app to, to remember what you've done and stuff. But it's, Really big and ambitious, and it was taking like three hours. I think he played it a couple of times. It was three hours each time. Um, but honestly, for a game like that, for nowadays, I think I think that would actually go over. He's trying to make it shorter, but it, you know, I, I think people would would get into a uh, a game with that kind of story and that kind of uh, interactivity with that. So that's ambitious. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm probably the only one here that played a lot of prototypes. I played like four or five, but. 
Oh yeah. Um, I forgot I'm not the only one here that works for publisher. Um, I did play a few published games, which was nice. Um, Baron Park was probably my favorite of those. Um, I played Baron Park. I played Sentient. Um, from the designer of Gold West. Uh, what else did we play? I played King Domino. Oh my gosh, King Domino. So for the SDJ, I'm not entirely sure why. Well, I mean, I kind of am, but I don't know. I, I had a, I had a lot of complaints about King Domino. Not because it's a bad game. It's because it's like a good game with one, one or two ridiculous things. Have anyone played that King Domino? I rather enjoy King Domino. I, like I enjoyed the process, except for unless you're like the last player in the turn order, in which case you just handed a tile every once in a while. I was play better. And then one guy in our game was like last in turn order a couple times in a row, and so he just didn't play for half the game because he just was he handed tiles. Um, but did you have any read the rules of Seeking Domino, no. or did someone just teach you? No, I learned it from the rules. Do you remember this? How you pick the start player in the beginning of the game, or how you pick turn order in, in, the, in that first round? No, because it's, if you read the rules, start players stupid. Yeah, well, this is this is more than stupid. It's not like oh, the last place, not the last person to be in a kingdom, or oh, the last person to play dominoes. No, no, no. So what it is is you have like a variable turn order every round. So to set up the very first one, you'd think it'd just be something like oh, arbitrarily pick or randomly pick the turn order. But no, you gather up all the players' pieces in one hand, someone in their hands, and then someone else draws one out. And then, irrespective of whose it is, chooses where it goes in the turn order. And the next person draws one out and chooses where it goes. And uh, first of all, it, it's so unusual, and it wasn't 100% clear at first that that was what we're supposed to be doing, and it made so little sense. And second of all, it matters not at all. I mean, you're asking people to make decisions that don't matter, and it's kind of king -making. You're like, oh, I drew your piece? I'll put you last. Or, oh, oh I drew my piece? I'll go first, or whatever. And... It's like That's not what it's a really complicated, weird thing to do for like the SDJ of a, a super simple game. An SDJ nominee, you know. Well, I guess they didn't know it was going to be SDJ nominee, but I don't understand why this whole complicated process. It, and the rule book is like a small sheet front and back, and it takes like a quarter of that sheet to explain how to set up the first turn's turn order. Actually, it, what's it, up with that? It, it actually just says you draw them out randomly, and then you put yours in the turn order you want to be. That's not the rules that I read. I read them like three times because I was like, that's ridiculous. Controversy. I cannot trust your opinion anymore, Seth. It would be a little better if you randomly chose one out and then that player picks what turn order to be. I it guess. says a player takes all the kings in their hands, shuffle them thoroughly, and they get them out of their hands one after the other. When your king appears, place it on an empty domino in the line. Each tile can only have one king. It means the last player doesn't have a choice. Controversy. Swear that's not what it said when I read it. Maybe you played the German. <laughs> even if it's not yours. Does it say even if it's not yours, like when you draw it out or something? No, it says to place your king on the. Take your okay. king. Okay. I wonder if there was like a like a revised rule book or something because I swear to God it said even if it's not yours. Did your box that you played out of look like this or was it tall? I don't know. Because it could be the German edition instead of this one. Maybe it was the German one. I have no idea. I wasn't paying attention to the box, but anyway, I thought it, I thought that that was only the one ridiculous thing about it. Like that doesn't affect the game really. But I would have liked that game better if you had one more tile and there were people at least. So if you were last in turn order, you got to pick the tiles and make a decision because everyone's going to spend about twenty five percent of the time last in turn order. So I, I like to play a full game, not th not a three quarters of a game. Anyway, and yet that's what's up for the SDJ. So who am I to say? Maybe I should just make games with stupid rules, and then they'll. What even oh, went up I for that? Him in a domain microcosm. So. What even? <laughs> what even went up for the SDJ? Uh, so King Domino and uh, something called Magic Maze that I'm not familiar with. I think it's Magic a cooperative maze. game about navigating a maze or something. And um, El Dorado, the, the Road to El Dorado by Reiner Kinesia, which I did play, not at Origins. I played it in England. And I actually thought that that would surprise me just about every way it could, because that's a deck building game by Reiner Knizia, and Reiner Knizia is famous for not wanting to play other people's games because he doesn't want to be inspired by them. So I was like, how do you make a? So it's a deck building. It's a very solid, streamlined deck building game that 
has clearly had the benefit of all the deck building games that came before it. And I'm like, how do you make that if you've never played a deck building game? Well, the answer is he's got a, a designer circle that I'm sure at least some of them, probably all of them, are very familiar with deck building games. Um, so I don't know if they, you know, whether whether it was largely one of the other designers or whether they just informed him how they work or what. But it's also a race. It's not like a weird scoring thing where the like you're you know you score for sets of different colored things or whatever or the whatever you have the fewest of. That's what you score. It's instead simple race. So your cards either move you forward on the board on, the, on you know going from board to board to board, or they help you buy other cards. And it even has like a like a headwind. Like if you played Snow Tails and you crash into it the first if you're ahead there's lots of trees you can crash into but if you crash into it it removes the tree so you, people behind you have an easier time it has something like that where if you are the first person to go from one board to the next you have to pay extra but then that little barrier goes away and you uh the later players can kind of have an easier time so it's got that going and it's got a really weird twist on like what cards are available there are like 18 cards or so i don't know maybe more <laughs> three copies of each but only six of them are available to buy and when one of those stacks empties, now you can buy any of them, but when you buy one, it fills that space, so no one can buy anything else except for that and the ones that were already available. So that was kind of a neat twist of what's available and when. Yeah, and it was a pretty solid game, and I, I kind of liked it. And uh, so, yeah, I like it. Uh, well, I liked it better than King Domino, but only because King Domino uh, should have had five, uh, one extra tile per the number of players um but yeah i think i like and it's more my kind of game so i like that better than that and i have never played that uh magic maze i don't know anything about that mm. magic maze and then is what's up for what's up for the kenner spiel it's like terraforming mars is that one of them terraforming mars that? um the uh exit probably the win. game series and Sorry, the, exit, right? the last one was it's uh, scythe right no it's not scythe not scythe um Shit, I know what it is, and I can't think of it. It's on my shelf somewhere. I have it. Uh, oh, uh, Raiders of the North Sea. Oh, that's course, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. we're playing that today. So yeah, Exit. I haven't played. It's uh, I escape rooms are cool and popular, and people seem to be loving this Exit game. I don't know if that means it'll win the Kenner's Um It's not a game. It's an. I feel like it's, it's, a, it's a puzzle. If yeah, if it were up to me, it wouldn't because that's. I don't feel like that's the Kenner's Field Yards. Is it for like cool puzzles? It's for like strategy games but that's right i'm not the judge so i don't get to pick what it's about yeah. um i actually I, wrote a big article about it but i can't really publish it anywhere because i don't want to be critical of other people's games or, or right other but it's a good game like demonstrably good like people love it <laughs> but i feel like it's got some serious issues so the difference between a good game and a good design is a uh, kind of an interesting topic and it's kind of depressing when you're the kind of designer that you know, is sort of an idealist when it comes to design, but what people want to play isn't good design. It's a good game. Anyway, um, and then I don't know, the Raiders North Sea is pretty cool, and I... My only issue with that is, like, it's really fun, the stuff you're doing. You're putting out guys and taking guys back, and you're building up to do stuff. But the cards are all like, oh, if you lose this guy, uh, pick someone and kill one of their guys, too. And, like, I guess if you know they exist and you know people have them, you can sort of, like, think, oh, I might get screwed. But, like, especially if you're not paying attention to that or you don't know that they're, your opponent's about to, like, lose the guy. You could be you could spend three turns getting ready to do a thing, and you're ready to get your payoff, and you're all happy about it. And then your opponent uh, loses a guy, and he has to pick somebody, and he goes, oh, I guess I'll pick you. I don't have any reason, but I'll pick you. And you're like, oh, I, I lost a guy, and it's going to send me back, like, two turns now to, like, get back to this position. And then that's super disappointing in a game where you get to otherwise build up to do, you know, missions or whatever. Yeah, it's so, it can be screwy. What's that? You can't. There's some scourge in there, right? Yeah. Well, I think uh, too many of the cards are too uh, take thatty for me. I feel right. like. I mean, yeah. there's other ones too, like oh, just steal specific resources from specific people or whatever. And I don't know. I feel like that kind of game. People that want to play an interesting worker placement game where you place a worker and then remove a worker, which is a cool mechanism. I feel like there's not a whole lot of overlap between those people and people that want to play a card that steals something from somebody. So that's weird. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty it's cool kind game. of. I like the game, but it surprised me that it got nominated for this award because I, I guess it just came out in Germany last year, but I've had it for, what, three years or two years or something like that? Good. And, and the market it came from, there is more to that, right? I guess. And I guess if you consider, okay, it's a Viking-themed game, you should, maybe you should expect that it's got some take-that stuff. Like, right. of course, we're Vikings. We're going to 
pillage each other or whatever. I just, I don't know. I, I would like that game better if it were, you know, because it's, it's all about building stuff up and then all of a sudden there's this random take that. It's kind of like in Lords of Waterdeep, I, I was I didn't, I don't play with the mandatory quests. I was when I, well, I haven't played that in a while, but I kind of took them out because if you draw it, it's like either it's a wasted draw because you should have uh, gotten a card that helped you. Instead, you got one that doesn't help you. Or um, it's kind of an ineffectual thing like, oh, I guess I'll waste an action to throw this on you and it doesn't really hurt you that bad. Or else it hurts you ridiculously a lot because of the, your, you know, the last couple turns of the game, you're building up to finish your large mission or quest or whatever. And all of a sudden you can't because you have to do this other quest first and you run out of time. So it's either super swingy and king makey or it's ineffective um, when you play it and it sucks for the guy that drew it because it wasn't resources that you expect to get from the cards. So we didn't like it, so we didn't play with them. But I know a lot of people that totally like them. It was the same kind of thing. That game was not about screwing your neighbor. That game's about more efficiently doing your quests. In my opinion. Interesting. So. My one issue with but, the exit of the game... Oh, go ahead, Diffie. The I had some issues. Games, with I would like to try them because I'd probably like them. But the only they're thing not bad. Was uh the rant from Ben Maddox? Did you guys hear that? Like on Perfect Information podcast, nah. Ben Maddox. He's like, they did a review of it and stuff, and and Ben would not like, he couldn't get over how wasteful, like physically wasteful, the game is. In well, that, and there's even... that, and there's another thing with it. So, like some of the iconography are not even iconography. With the way the engine in the game works, without this won't be a spoiler, but. You're solving a puzzle. You get your solution to the puzzle. You look it up on a code wheel. It gives you a number. You turn to that answer. If it's a possible answer, you'll flip it over, and there is a grid of little pictures saying, where did you see the symbol you're solving? And it's got little bitty, bitty, and I mean like half a centimeter wide pictures of clips from where you've seen them somewhere else in the game. And we solved a puzzle. Nope. It said it was wrong because where that linked us to. We did it over. We messed with this puzzle for 40 minutes after we thought we had it solved. Finally, we went back and looked really close. I got out my phone and used the magnifier. The picture we were selecting looks dead like another one of the pictures on that page, except for a little bitty black spot on the bottom edge. <laughs> and so we wasted 40 minutes because you there was not enough distinction in the pictures I to see. be able to tell. The other thing is they're printed on glossy like regular board game card stock right that thing should be printed on that cheap ass 50 cent card decks you get at the dollar store that you know that if you shuffle them three times they start to come apart because they expect you to draw on it with pencil and erase and stuff like that you can't see pencil on these damn glossy cards and that's my two beefs with those games. Yeah, because you and waste a lot of time. The problem was too is that like it's literally thrown directly in the trash can. Some of it untouched, and it's just like super wasteful yep. day and age. So it sounds like it should be an app or a video game, not a not a board game. Right. It's so the cool. unlock series uses the, an app, and it's resettable, is what I understand. But the extra I don't know. I played it one. I'm sure they'd be cool. I like all the puzzles. I does, like escape rooms. Does, what does it do anything differently than what Time Stories does? I no, hated yes. Time Stories, and I like this more. Ever you played a ton oh, of Time Stories, you just got bored of it. I love Time Stories. I think Time Stories is great. Uh, th I have a different issue with Time Stories. I'm not going to get into it because I want to go to bed. Time Stories replaced every storytelling adventure type game in my collection. I have Time Stories. I don't like to play those games that often. But when I do, I usually can just buy a brand new Time Stories expansion and play that instead. And I like the puzzles, I like the story, and it's something I, fun I can do with my wife and some friends. Yeah, my one, it, my biggest issue with Time Stories and what killed it for me was you can play Time Stories and you can win. I can play it and I can lose. We can make the exact same decisions in that game. You win and I lose because of the randomness of the die in a game I get to play exactly once. And to me, that's broken. It's it's not about it's not a game about winning and losing though. 
I mean, what, what when I win and you lose, what kind of experience? I mean, the experience was pretty much exactly the same. But if I'm not winning the game, then it's no longer game. But, but you can't it's lose not, that game. Yeah, it's can. not even. A, but it's not even. It's not even a game. It's just a thing to do. Yeah, I just did not care for it. It just did not click for me. And I'm not gonna say it's bad. It's just not my thing. Right. Uh, I did find something to do with a finished game of Exit the Room, though. Or exit the game, whatever it's called. I blew it up with a shotgun, and that was very therapeutic. Uh, so, I'm scrolling back through the comments because I just had a whole long spiel that I was yapping. And I was wondering, wondering if people were saying anything in the comments. And someone says, uh, Paul Tompkins says that uh, King, I'm wrong. King Domino is great. You need to play with the right rules. We play with the right rules, except for maybe the start player that first round. That was just set up. Um, but like, sounds like a Tom excuse to me. Yeah. So I'm not sure what um, <laughs> I'm not sure what he thinks would be better if I play with the right rules. I mean, it's a good game. I just don't like that. I, I wish there was you would play with an extra uh, choice, so the player last in turn order gets a choice. But well, yeah. it's like it's like I, I talked to so so Seth, and I'm going to be vague here, but like you, know, we played a game at Origins that you know we kind of soured on as the game progressed. Mm -hmm. And was it Crusaders? Because I know, because I know you don't want to talk about games or whatever like that. You know, I, I I feel like I need to give that one another try. You know, like maybe there's something there that like. Oh, I I wouldn't play that. I wouldn't mind playing that again. I I, I definitely would. I know what you're talking about. Um, I actually but, sent the designer an idea for potential promo or expansion that might um might be cool and and also might make me like it better. Um. Yeah, I just I I was really. I was really nonplussed on it. Yeah, I was just, it was one of those things where it was just kind of like decisions were too obvious and it was just kind of like, I felt it was far too much luck in that game going on, uh, you know? So I mean, I don't know. And which is weird for me because I, I don't mind luck in games, but I like, I like it when there's like luck in the game where like you, you have a die roll and, Oh, you need to get a six here or else, you know, whatever. Okay, fine. Cause that adds to like to the, the narrative of, of the game. But this one, it was just kind of like, oh, well, here are your choices, and if you're lucky, one of them will work out for you. And I didn't like that at all. Mm. So Kabuki Kid backs me up. She says she swears that she was taught with the same start player rule, so that's cool. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crazy. I read something. I wonder if that was like a poorly translated rule, and then it got re-upped when somebody picked it up or something. It's possible. Okay. All right, well, it's getting late. People are talking about crashing, so why don't we just uh, call it a night? It is 12.37 in the a.m. Uh, just quick note. Uh, um, yeah, I would have uh, I would have beaten Anthony initials tonight if I'd played him. I think that's that's evident. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you had the, uh, the clues. Uh, that helped, yes. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> big thanks to everybody who uh, watched us. Uh, Big thanks to Wiggity Wiggity for showing up. Uh, and, of course, uh, if, if you want to play a super awesome, cool, uh, mutated goats uh, beating the crap out of each other game, um, it is it is the best mutated goats game out there. I, I will say that. But no, seriously, uh, go check out go, go check out uh, Brent's Kickstarter. How many days you got left on that right now, Brent? Thanks, Lance. Uh, I think we got uh, six days left. So we're in our last week. And you're funded, and you're you're good to you're good to roll, right? Yeah, we funded in eight hours. We're we're doing really good, but hope to unlock a couple couple of new stretch goals. If in, if, uh, in the last week. if somebody missed out on the, I, I didn't look, but if somebody missed out on the base set, like the first set, or, do you have a pledge level that lets people go all in for the whole thing? Yeah, totally. We actually have a like it's like a steal on it too. You can get uh, all of our other games, all three of the games, uh, plus like the play mat and the, the bonus sliders for, for a set. dollar. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much 75 of those, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good thing. And then also all of our games are standalone, so you don't actually need uh, the base game or either of the expansions to play. You can just pick it up as is. The and, shark uh, the shark goat is in the, the new one, right? <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah I, I, like, I like the shark goat. So, um, all right, cool. Uh, Barry, it was really good to see you, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm overwhelmed with the joy I have. Oh. 
Go, go screw yourself. Uh, <laughs> good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Good night. Thanks, Les. Thanks for having